Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Yes, 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 we have made it back from the weekend. Look what we found sitting outside. That's right, we got my main man, NBA Hall of Famer Tim Hardaway. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to another edition of the Card Show. Of course, that guy on the end is Mr. David Jacoby. All right, Jacoby. All right there, Jacoby. You got the Hall of Famer right there. And you got Mr. Luscious himself. Yeah. Luscious. Super Bowl Luscious. champion, Willie Anthony Aloysius <laughs> Cologne. Unlike a lot of you, I've just spilled a drink all over the, uh, the yep, set. Early. Right Still St. Patrick's Day. Early. Day. Uh, St. Patrick's early. Day. Liquid everywhere. But I, I, I love today. Today's always one of my favorite days of the year. Because today's the day, and it's inevitable, it's guaranteed, you know what's going to happen, it's an absolute lock, there's going to be a really prominent college basketball team and coach, wah, (laughs) we didn't get into the tournament, wah, the committee messed up, wah, and the fan bases all go crazy. Look, if you can't get into the top 68, which is essentially what the tournament is now, Quit your bitch and you weren't going to win the tournament anywhere anyway. And the team I'm, of course, talking about is uh, a well-known cheater. Uh, and that, of course, <laughs> is St. John's head oh, coach man. Rick Pitino. Oh. And they're all, wow, we didn't get in. And wow, we beat St. Hall in the tournament. And look, three weeks ago, Rick Pitino came out and said, my team sucks. This is the worst experience of my life, and I may retire. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's like, I can't believe we got screwed and we didn't get in. And the metric I keep hearing about, which said we were 33rd, is BS. And we're, you know what? We're not going to play in the NIT. Good. Who needs it, Tim Hardaway? Yeah, you know, somebody always gets snubbed. Somebody always gets left out. And uh, he was just inf- unfortunate to be one of those teams. Even yeah. though his teams was gaining. They played you know, better ball momentum. lately. Sure. They, they have, you know, since he said those things about his team, they've been playing better basketball. Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, it's, it's the scheduling. Uh, it's just not the timing for him. And, I mean, and he don't want to play in the NIT. So, right. you know, Like, I'm all sorry. of a sudden, they haven't made the NCAA tournament in five years, and the NIT is beneath them. <laughs> You're St. John's. Sorry, I know you're New York City's team, but you haven't been very good for 30 years. Uh, I can really go all the way back to Walter Berry. I can go back to your running mate, Chris Mullen, if I want to. I can go back to Felipe Lopez. Yes. You have not had a good basketball team in damn near 20 years. I know you made the tournament five years ago, but quit your bitching. You've got one of the wealthiest donors out there, Mike Rapoli, great guy, old friend of mine, who uh, you founded Vitamin Water and Body Armor, and he's got the money to write the check. Write the check. Right. Go get the top five high school players in America. Give them two million dollars each, and St. <laughs> John's can win the tournament next year because that's what it's all about. But let me tell you something right now. The focus of this show, well, we're certainly going to acknowledge the tournament and the playing games tomorrow and Wednesday, and then of course Thursday afternoon, which is the day the majority of men in this country get vasectomies, yep. so they can just sit oh. at home oh. with an uh, ice pack on their balls and Maybe watch college right. basketball. That wow. By the way, yeah. true story. Wow. The, the two days of the year that the majority of men get vasectomies are the Thursday and Friday, the opening two days of the actual tournament, keeping the playing games aside. Thursday and Friday, there are more vasectomies on those two days than any other two days of the year. Where did that come I'll from? Do it, I'll, do it live on the show. I'll do it live on the show. You don't Thursday. want that because we don't, don't have wanna... the camera strength to see it and yeah. the whole thing for you. No? Yeah. Um, but <laughs> it would be like, we can discuss it if you want to. Yeah. I, ha- I had it done. Go and rent the Thanksgiving weekend. It's awesome, by the really? way. Really? Yeah, it's another story for another day. No, um, no we got time. No, no you, the yeah, doctor needed yeah, bigger. You just brought time. it up. What happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just brought it up. It's a weird story. I don't want to brag, but he needed bigger tweezers. Oh, oh okay. Got it. Tweezers yes, they yeah, use. Yeah. I get it. Tweezers. <laughs> I see. Tweezers. I see. <laughs> That's, by the way, I swear I'm not making that up. The, the, this Thursday and Friday, there are more vasectomies done than any other two days of you, the you year. Li- you really, sh- you, you, it, this is right. 
That's a fact. I swear to you. Like, you you may accuse me of making some other things up. Yep. Mike Williams is not going to be a Kansas City Chief, <laughs> about, apparently. But I'm not making this up. It is an actual fact, and I can show you the data to back it up. That's when most men have it done because you figure it's four straight days where you get to sit on your ass, watch basketball. You might, if you're going to get it done, go ahead and get it done. Well, look, we got plenty oh, of college basketball right yeah, yeah, I'm going to book it right now. There you go. I, I'm not. Well, I'm not. Not. I'm not. You, you, you can't book it out because first not. you have to go in and say you want it done, and then you have to wait 30 days before you do it. Uh, because uh, it's, it's a, one, you know, of those, one of those yeah. you know, major life decisions. Let me see. Don't take a break just yet. <laughs> see, that's what they do to me. I can tease anything. I can't talk about anything. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Welcome back to the Car Time. All right. We have some news. Justin Fields, we've been talking <laughs> about him for months. He finally got moved. He is All now right. a Pittsburgh Here we go. Steeler. Oh. Interesting for a oh. sixth-round pick. If he plays the majority of snaps, it will be a fourth-round pick. Craig, what do you think about Fields being moved for Why a sixth-round pick? <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Look, I, I don't get tired of being right. I never get tired of being right. So why don't we go into the Carton Show time machine and just take a look back while you were home watching the show, Timmy. Yes. Sure you saw this thing twice. I saw twice. this. I s- do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. Okay. Do it. Okay. Oh, we're still doing it. <laughs> Be great if you played it with sound, it's actually. Bears, but I keep him around. Be a damn good slot receiver. Damn good slot receiver. Stop and damn it, good you slot receiver. You don't even <laughs> d- d- that. Damn good slot receiver. Uh, I don't know why we played that. That's not. That's it. not it's, it. That's not it at all. It's fine. It's early in the show. It's Monday. Uh, <laughs> new producer. Someone's getting fired. Uh, look, what I said last week was that he was done. He was never yes. going to play another down as quarterback right. for the Chicago Bears. What I never could have figured out, and it is surprising to me that all they could get for him is really a sixth-round pick. He's not going to play 51% of the snaps in Pittsburgh because sure. they've already said Russell Wilson's a starter. He's going there to be his backup. And I think it's a good move by Pittsburgh, by the way, to have a young quarterback. There's some contractual issues where he's going to be a free agent and have an opportunity to go somewhere else just based on how the, the contract works. But I think it's a smart move by Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett's a malcontent, wanted no part of being yeah. a backup to Russell Wilson. I don't know what he thinks he's accomplished in the league where he can't back somebody up who's won a Super Bowl, but that's where Kenny Pickett was. So he gets traded, as you know by now, to Philadelphia. What I'm trying to figure out on this just and field thing is, for those of you like yourself, yep. like Greg Jennings, so unfortunately can't be here today to answer to this, is why you guys thought so highly of Justin Fields and why you thought he was still going to be a starting quarterback when the market has now spoken. Doesn't matter what I say. The market has now told you he was worth a six-round pick. And let me just put that into perspective. The NFL market has now come out and said that we value Kenny Pickett more than we value Justin Fields. The Eagles gave up more to get Kenny Pickett than the Steelers gave up to go out there and get Justin Fields. So let's start with that as low-hanging fruit. What's your response to that? Well, you got Justin Fields, who had three years into his career. He only had 40 touchdowns. In the, we're talking about the three years he was with the uh, yeah. Chicago Bears. He, had, he didn't have anything around him, right? Multiple head coaches, OCs, yada, yada, yada. Kenny Pickett was only on his second year. He had a first good year and a bad second year. Yeah. What hurt Kenny Pickett was his ability, his lack of ability to go out there when they needed him to go out there. Justin Fields still had a lot of room for growth. Even when he was under Luke Geske as an uh, offensive coordinator and he had Eberflus, those back nine games, he played better. Sure. So whatever the market says is fine, but at the end of the day, Justin Fields had more take than Kenny Pickett. And yet Bottom Kenny line. Pickett got more of a return than Justin Fields did. And then to take that, we take that conversation now to the next level because here's what I'm trying to figure out. 
The Philadelphia Eagles have a starting quarterback. They uh, needed to replace Marcus Mariota as a back. If you go get Kenny Pickett, a uh, kid who's now not going to be a starter in this league and maybe can resuscitate his career at some point. I get that. Okay. Pittsburgh Steelers. You have Russell Wilson, Super Bowl champion, trying to reprove himself. Game hasn't lost him. Uh, he hasn't lost yeah. it. And now he wants to show all the doubters. I can still play. Justin Field goes there. Be the back. I get that. Understand all that. Here's what I don't understand. What the heck are the Denver Broncos doing? <laughs> because if you could get Justin Fields, who I don't think is a very good quarterback, but you don't have a quarterback in Ben DiNucci and Jared Stidham. Right. And as of right now, you haven't moved up in the draft to get one of the top three quarterbacks yet in the upcoming draft. What I can't understand is, I think his name is George Patton, the general manager in Denver, or maybe you pronounce it Peyton, that's fine. And you have Sean Payton there as well. Mm -hmm. But what are you guys doing? Because if you could have gotten Kenny Pickett for a fourth rounder and you don't have a starting quarterback, why not? Oh, that's right, because he stinks. Sure. And if you could have gotten Justin Fields for a fifth or sixth rounder, because that's what he went for, a sixth rounder, why didn't you? Oh, that's right, because nobody thinks Justin Fields is a very good quarterback. And that's why he wasn't taken by the Denver Broncos. No. And I could still make the argument he's better than DiNucci and of Stidham. Course. Yeah, I don't know that he is. No, no. He, him and Ryan Poles, Justin Fields and Ryan Poles had a discussion. And in that discussion, Ryan, Justin Fields, pretty much, these are the teams I want to go to. These are the teams I'm not going to. There were four teams that were after Justin Fields. He, did, he said, I don't want to go here. The one team that he said that he wanted to go to because of the relationship he had with Mike Tomlin was the Pittsburgh Steelers. So this wasn't just no teams wanted them. There were teams out there. I don't believe that for no. a minute. They, yeah, they got a six-round draft pick. It's like, he's, it's like he's an afterthought. Go ahead, Tim well, maybe, maybe he didn't want to go where Sean Payton was going because, because what he oh. did to Russell Wilson. Was that you know, somewhere he did? Didn't want or maybe there's no weapons out there for yeah, him to play with. Oh, is that no right? But I think, well, I, I, think, I, think I think Pittsburgh Steelers oh. did a great job because yeah. they could have him I agree in, with in you. a Wildcat. I and agree. he could come out and do his stuff in a Wildcat uh -huh. and have Russell Wilson go back and sit down and come back in, and that's how they could play him. So but, the guy who's achieved nothing in his career. Oh, you're such I a, don't oh. wanna I don't wanna play it for has him. Either. Pickett, I, why, why, would he, why would he go to – wait, wait, wait. We need to get on Pickett just like you get – no, I, I do. Uh, All the time I get on Kenny Pickett. He's a terrible quarterback. <laughs> yeah. With teeny little hands. But, but he wanted to leave because he didn't want to That's right. be a bad And I will tell you this. Kenny Pickett can't play for me because if you can't take competition, then you can't Facts. lead my team. I agree with that. I, I, I and agree that's with that. why I love okay, Baker well, Mayfield. Justin Fields then. I'm you're on not, both you, of them. You, you, no, you're not like – you sounding off on Justin Fields just a little bit too much. Well, because Justin Fields happened more recently than Kenny Pickett. But let me be clear, sir because that's a very fine question. Kenny Pickett's the same exact thing as Justin Fields, a first-round draft bust who cannot play no, quarterback in the NFL. The so there you go, Tim Hardaway. If you, okay. if you I, I agree you. with you on that. Thank you, If sir. you look at the Steelers' okay. quarterback room, they had Trubisky, Pickett, and Rudolph that's last right. year. And now they've got Wilson and Fields. Like, they have completely upgraded a team. No question. They, they won a bunch of games last yeah. year with bad quarterbacks. Like, yes. this, if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, this is a very, very good week for you. Uh, yes. The Russell Wilson signing is a very, very good thing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Justin Fields is not going to play for them unless, of course, Mike Tomlin thinks what I think wow, can and what you there. think. Wow, you can put him on the there. field in a non-quarterback position there. and let him be a rock he's star. He's not playing slot receiver. <laughs> no, he's not going to play they slot just, receiver. I'm talking about field, Wildcat. It's solely because Russell Wilson is stinking it up next it's year. Hurt, On top hurt. of that, if you're Justin Fields and you leave Chicago, why would you want to ever go to any other team and deal what you deal what you dealt with in Chicago? You, if you don't have weapons, you, you're not going to be great. Because you haven't earned the right to say what no to a trade. Earn? You have not earned the right to dictate where you go next. Much more on this later in the show. I'll let the big man I have some breakfast. I hate the word earn. Yeah, earn. He hasn't earned the right to who say no to a trade. Who earns the right to do anything? Uh, guys who have accomplished something in the league have earned the right to dictate where they go. Typically because they get a no-trade clause in their deals. But if you're a three-year veteran who right. hasn't thrown for 3,000 yards yet in a season, haven't had a winning season, you have but not earned... But none of that's his fault. You Oh, stop it making excuses. Name, Willie go Cologne. in rookie year. Name his team. You can't. Oh, here we go. Bumped. Let me ask you a question. You tell me a first-round quarterback that goes to a good team. CJ Stroud. Oh, stop it. What do you mean? The Houston Texans stunk the year they before. They went to the second round of the playoffs. Yes, they did. With but him. But when he went there, they weren't very good. 
That's why you pick as high as you pick to get a first-round quarterback. If you don't draft the quarterback and don't give him nothing to work with at that. You still got to earn the right to dictate where you play. And I'm sorry, Kenny Pickett and Justin Fields, neither of them have earned the right to say no to a trade. Much more on this later because I'm we're not done no, yet. I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. We are not I, done yet. You, you said you need some breakfast. We're not done yet. Wanna, Don't go nowhere. You want to earn something? Don't go nowhere. I need something to earn. <laughs> I've been boxing lately, so you better lie. Don't worry about them little fish. have some breakfast. <laughs> By the way, real quick, time now for one NBA thing. Uh, uh, you got to uh, love. We, just, we always get one NBA thing. Yeah, well, okay, guess what? What? I mean, a guy, Tim's here. I got to pay him. Um, here's LeBron James. James uh, down by seven, uh, what, a minute to go, a couple minutes to go. Whoops. Fourth quarter against Golden State. Why is LeBron James even in the game? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because he's got 38 points and he wants to score 40. He doesn't want to play any defense. But here's LeBron taking on the entire Golden State team. And isn't it funny when LeBron James gets his lunch taken from him by a six-foot-two-inch guard with bad ankles, and that, of course, is Steph Curry. Then on this play, he doesn't want to pass the ball to open teammates because, gosh darn it, I want my 40 points, and I'm not getting off this court until I score 40. A defense. Want to play defense? Nah, I don't want to play any defense. This game is a wrap. We're down seven with less than a minute to go, but I'm going to get my 40. And as soon as I get my 40, then I'll sit down. What a clown. Stop it. I watched the whole game. We did not show the clock situation. Mm. We did not show what happened before all him trying to – he just walked. The game was over with. Yeah. Both teams was out of it because what happened with the clock, it took 30 minutes. Yeah, that was crazy. 30 yes. minutes to, to fix the shot clock. Well, let me tell you and, what and, Tim and, is talking about. There was a possession that Golden State had where the shot clock wasn't working, and instead of getting 24 seconds no, to get no, a no, shot no, off, no, no, no. they got 40 no, cents, no, no, it, it, seconds it, to it, get it a started, shot off. It started, it, started, it, it started with a coach challenge. It started with two coaches' yeah. challenge, <laughs> and then it went to a timeout, and then they came back. LeBron them had the ball, and then the, shots, the, sh- the shot clock, clock right. stopped, stopped working, <laughs> and that took 20 minutes to yeah. get it together. Oh. And everybody was like, hey, the game over with. Even, even Golden State Warriors didn't That's play. still got nothing well, to do with it, him it, wanting it, to get 40. It, 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 well, <laughs> hey, Tim, I'm, you know I'm the story. You, it, it, he was out there. Timmy, he was you out know there. the story. He was out there. Down seven a minute to go. That it, guy it, never plays. It, he had 38 no, points. No, 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 no. He, he took does, on the entire they, no, world. No, they had a chance, they had a chance to um, no, come they, back. No, he stepped on the line, and, and they called a three-point play. <laughs> the three-pointer, no good because he stepped on the line. They went to the replay. That's yeah. what started the 30-minute uh-huh. delay, to tell you the truth. In any event, he got his 40, but they oh, lost. Well, I mean, and by, is, and uh, by the way, I'll just say one quick thing about LeBron and the Lakers. They keep losing. Yeah, the they're going to be Houston Rockets are coming yep. for that final spot, and that would be awesome. Anyhow, we got a lot more coming your way. Tons of a football. Keenan Allen spoke about uh, moving on to a new team, and we finally found out what Aaron Rodgers is going to do next year. Is it <laughs> politics or is it football? <laughs> Answer that question coming up. One of the new fans in uh, sports is at the end of a game, you're know, star players, you're exchanging jerseys. We've seen it. Some fans don't like it. They're fraternizing. Some don't give a rat's ass. And uh, we ordinarily never talk about a Toronto Raptor or Orlando Magic game. But there's an NBA rookie on both teams. Uh, the Raptors have a young kid named Grady Dick. Yep. <laughs> and uh, the Orlando Magic have a kid on their team named Anthony Black. Yeah. Well, the two uh, rookies decide, you know, be cool, since we're both enjoying our first year in the NBA, let's do a jersey swap <laughs> after the game. So, again, their names are Grady Dick and Anthony Black. And they decided to do a a jersey swap. (laughs) And um, you can read right there. uh, It looks like, well, yeah, it's right there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, when when Black and Dick um, shared swap jerseys, you got that uh, winning picture right there. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> it's yeah. interesting. Like, I mean, come on. Yeah. If the yeah. NBA headline is Black Dick, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh-uh. how, hey. how great is that? Out of the star lineup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. best is, you know, they're kind of conspiring to do it. Yeah. And afterwards, one of the guys, I'm not sure it was Black or Dick, yeah. decided he like, ran to the photographer yeah. and said, let's do this really quick. We're doing right. this. Yeah. Right. We're doing this. Yeah. Probably Dick. Yeah, that. Yeah. yeah which nah, reminds nah, me. Nah, I'm good. Remember the, the, the Japanese basketball player, Ho-Ho Fat? Yeah. Imagine if he was a part of that jersey swap. 
Black hole hole? Yeah, I can't. Black okay. fat. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's starting to push. This is, a, this is a good time for the Mad Libs. Uh, sports Mad Libs would do great right about it. Imagine that trio, black fat. Uh, yeah. What we yeah. got? We got Lively on yeah. the Mavs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. James in, Harden. In any event, I got a kick out of it. Time now for first. <laughs> you see what I'm doing? You see what I'm doing? No. no. Let's Tim go on. Uh, was Trey Young in that picture? No, no, no he's not. Okay. Here's, not even in here's, it. Here's <laughs> Football, football, former Chargers yeah. wideout and current Bears wideout Keenan Allen said that the Bears are going to be special on offense. Can the Bears challenge the Packers and the Lions in the NFC North? Uh, no. Uh, he also said it before the trade, so I wonder how he feels about it now <laughs> that you know, Caleb Williams is obviously going to be their, their quarterback. Look, it's and it's all on that kid, right? If Caleb Williams does what C.J. Stroud was capable of doing, which is play really competent football as a rookie, then, yes, the Chicago Bears are going to be a tough team. I can't pick them to beat the Lions yet no. for the division because no. I know exactly what the Lions are. I can't even pick them right now to be better than the Green Bay Packers because I get a sense I know what the Packers are, the way Jordan Love played in the second half of the season. But the Chicago Bears – should no longer be an easy out for teams. Mm. I think they've improved the talent on both sides of the football. Getting a guy like Keenan Allen to play on the opposite side of the field uh, from DJ Moore is huge. Don't forget, Keenan Allen last year had over 100 receptions and only played 13 games. Mm -hmm. It was like his best year as a pro. Mm -hmm. So you have legitimate veteran wide receivers. They got DeAndre Swift from Philly, so you've got a legitimate running back. And now it comes down to, do we have the right coach? And can we stop anybody? And if you have the answer yes to those two questions, I wouldn't be shocked if we're here December 1st talking about how the Chicago Bears are alive for a playoff spot. And again, that then becomes all based on whether or not Caleb Williams is able to understand right. and play the NFL game right out of the gate. Obviously, not everyone can do that. C.J. Stroud proved you could. And if he can do that, then the Bears are a problem. Yeah, the Bears are special from the standpoint they got two number one receivers. D.J. Moore's the number one. He's the number one. Now you're going to put a lot of pressure on defense. Do we play man coverage? Do we sure. go zone? Do we double? So it's going to be a it's going to be. And by the a way, of... everyone forgets it. They also have the ninth pick. Yep. Yeah. So you're talking about a team that's going to get the franchise quarterback. And I'm not going to pretend to be a draft nick. I'm not. But – that ninth pick could absolutely be whoever the best offensive lineman is in the, in the draft, too. Right. So now you're getting more protection for your quarterback. And the Chicago Bears look like they're putting together a legitimate squad. Absolutely. And moving on to second and football, another former Chargers wideout, Mike Williams. He's going to be visiting with some teams. Oh, is that right? One Jacoby. of those teams he's going to visit. Your Jets, Kirk! New York Jets. He'll also be visiting <laughs> with the Panthers That's and the joke, Steelers. Man. That's not a Mr. Carton, how yeah. do you feel about Mike Williams potentially joining the Jets? Look, I like it. The concern is that the dude is never healthy. Yeah. So I'm going out there. I went and got Tyron Smith, the left tackle, who I love. He's not been healthy lately. I got two offensive linemen, of course, from Baltimore. I'm happy with that. We rebuilt our offensive line. So I'm feeling really good as a Jet fan. Mike Williams, to me, is a name, right? He's not a guy that lives up to that name as often as you'd like him to because he gets hurt so often. So if he became a Jet, and I know he's my second best receiver behind Garrett Wilson, obviously, yep. I'd probably take a one-year flyer on him. If he's looking for two, three, four years and buku bucks, I'd probably pass on him. But the fact that the Jets are even being considered is great. The problem for me is that the Panthers are also being considered. And to me, I never want to be talked about in the same breath as the <laughs> Carolina Panthers, right? That's like charity work right there. So I like the fact that the Jets will see him because they recognize we need to do better at wide receiver. But any conversation has Carolina in it is not a sentence you want to be in. Yeah, listen, if you bring him along, you first of all, you got to see how far along he is in his ACL uh, rehab process. Right, which was right? what, week three, I yeah, think? Yeah, so hopefully he's ready to go and he'd be ready to go for training camp. But if I'm the Jets, I would take a shot of him because who else do you have right now outside of Garrett Wilson yep. that could pose a threat? And every all the big-time receivers right now are gone. So you talk about depth right here. Garrett Wilson being your number one. Alan Lazard, you hopefully you get something out him now that Aaron Rodgers right. is back lineup. Everybody, on, I like Bromley or not, he'll get more opportunities and Malik Taylor, but overall, the, they don't have quality depth. Look, the key thing here is not, I know when we started this conversation talking about Mike Williams, I get it, he's a big name, 
But if we're going to talk about the Jets, the New York Jets answered the bell this offseason. They were charged with one major responsibility, upgrade your offensive line. Yes, yep. We have three new offensive linemen. We have Tyron Smith, who's a two-time pro bowler. You got Simmons, and I'm blocking on Simpson, rather. And Morgan Moses, who had Morgan been a Jet, Jet for yeah. a second. A very tough He's player. good. He's good and a depth guy. But the New York Jets delivered what they promised they would, and that is a rebuilt offensive line to protect Aaron Rodgers. So, as a Jet fan, yeah, now I'm going to get greedy. Now I want another wide receiver. You have to. And if Mike Williams wants to play for me, look, we're not going to lose the battle unless it comes down to a ridiculous amount of money to Carolina. Pittsburgh becomes interesting now. Yeah. Like, because Pittsburgh's legit now. All right. Pittsburgh's a legitimate team that's got legitimate Super Bowl hopes. You know, having Russell Wilson there and the other moves that they've made this offseason. So, to me, it comes down to us as the Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. I never worry about Carolina because they're not even really an NFL team. <laughs> They're not. They're a joke. <laughs> what are you doing? It should be in the UFL. Stop. Oh, Moving on to third down. Way, I, don't, I, don't, like... I don't think the Panthers would wow. go undefeated in the UFL, by the way. I think the Panthers are about a 500 team in the UFL. <laughs> you act like this is a franchise like, like just join the NFL. It the seems Panthers like have it. a history. Yeah, not a good one. Not a good one. Not a good one, You're sir. You're brutal. Not a good one. Moving on to third down, former Bengals running back Joe Mixon spoke about joining his new team, the Texans, and here's what he had to say okay. about his new squad. Here he is. Well, CJ, he's a phenomenal player. I mean, obviously, he was the rookie of the year, and that ain't by no fluke. It's a lot of guys running around, young, don't know no better, and ready to get after it. And, um, you know, I've definitely been fortunate to be a part of something like that, so it's a great thing coming into this situation and, you know, basically picking up where I left off. So he's comparing the Texans to his former Bengals team that went to the Super Bowl. Do you expect these Texans to challenge be one of the top teams in the AFC? Yeah, I mean, look, based on what C.J. Stroud did last year, and if they come back healthy, because that was a big problem for them late in the year, they were decimated with injuries. Uh, first and foremost, win your division, right? Which they, they were lucky enough to do in the right. very last week of the season last year. And they won the division, and they get all the kudos for that. But like if I'm if I'm a member of the Houston Texans, and I don't want to you know put words in Joe Mixon's mouth, but he essentially said the Houston Texans Texans can be this year's version of the Cincinnati Bengals. Like why would I ever want to be the Cincinnati Bengals? Cincinnati Bengals didn't make the playoffs last year. <laughs> Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals have never won a Super Bowl. Like I aspire to be man. better than that. No. And I know Cincinnati is badass. And Joe Burrow comes back, and that changes the narrative of what they're going to do. But I'm trying to be better than Cincinnati. Like, all of a sudden, like, who wants to be a Bengal? No, no, he's talking about he sees the potential and what they can become. Yeah. Like Cincinnati did when they went to the Super Bowl. Oh, it's specifically the, when they, they lost went, the Super Bowl. Well, they Got went, it. but they uh, went. Got it. They went. They was all healthy, and they went. Yeah. And they still a threat. Yes. In their, yeah. in their, in their, uh, in their so city. That should be like the marketing so, thing for, but, for but Houston Texans. But that's, that's what he's talking about. It, you got to start somewhere. Hey, we're you good enough not to win the Super Bowl. You, you got to crawl before you walk. I, I, they crawled I, last year. Yes, now they're they walking. Yes. Now they're ready to run. That's what Mixon is talking about. I'm with you 100% on that, Timmy. No, no, you're not. You, you killed him. <laughs> you killed him. <laughs> no. Not, no, no. Mixon sees the potential and what they have like he saw it in yeah. Cincinnati. Hey, let's be the early 90 Bills. Probably Pass on that. I don't know who you know, pissed you know, your Cheerios it, it, this morning, but uh, Zach, you've been on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you've been on it. No, I, I think to Joe Mixon's point, too, you don't say he's a older running back. He's a veteran. Now you have a young quarterback who he sees in the second year. Now you got Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and, and Shorts. They do have a great cast of uh, uh, guys who's ready to go get it. The issue with Joe Mixon right now is him being a little long in the tooth. Can he be the difference maker? Because this is a, a running back court. Valid they have, I forgot, Pierce. They need more production out of that group. So can he be the difference maker and lead, help them lead? Well, I think it's a, it's a good deal for Joe Mixon because he goes to a good team that's got two legitimate wide receivers yeah. and obviously a young stud quarterback. So he, he, the comparison's a fair one from a standpoint of I just left the place with a young stud quarterback and two really good wide right. receivers, right? So he has that familiarity with that type of offense. You know, Joe Mixon's 27 years old. The fact that the Cincinnati Bengals, who think they're a Super Bowl contender, would walk away from a 27-year-old running back, you know, makes me consider what is it about Joe Mixon that the Bengals don't like. I know all the off-the-field stuff. Maybe that's part of it. Yeah. 
Uh, but That's the Houston Texans are getting a very good running back who's never won anything. So, great. All good. You know, great. You know, play for the Jets. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to fourth and football. Aaron Donald has officially retired. He announced his retirement, the future Hall of Famer. What do you think Aaron Donald's legacy will be moving forward? I think he's going to be working at Fox this fall is what I think. Oh. Um, I missed that by a year, by the way. I said he was going to retire last year, so I was off by 12 months. Sorry about that. Uh, look, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. No question. Yo, he's the standard bearer. He's the standard bearer of this generation for what a defensive end is supposed to do and how he's supposed to go attack quarterbacks, right? He's an absolute game changer. He was the first guy to cross the $30 million a year barrier. So all the contracts are really based on his, right? How close you can get to his or can you pass his like Chris Jones just yep. did. He made the Pro Bowl every single season of his career and they don't win the Super Bowl without him. Very much like Chris Jones last year. Right. If you go back three years to the Rams Super Bowl win, you remember that last play yeah. where Jay Ramsey's on his ass. Uh, and Jamar Chase is five yards down the field past him. And if Joe Burrow's got literally one extra second to plan and go, it is a wrap. The Bengals win that Super Bowl, and they didn't because of the greatness of Aaron Donald. So it's a loss for the league. It's obviously a big loss for a Rams franchise that did the unthinkable last year, and that is rebound right quick after a bad year and get back into the playoffs and damn near beat the Lions in that first round of the playoffs. He's a guy you cannot replace. So now you kind of replace his output yeah. uh, with the collective defensive line that you got. Yeah, well, first of all, he's responsible for why the, all these guards in the NFL are getting paid too much, right? Because he was he's unblockable, like he damn sure, sure was. And, like, for me, when I look at him in comparison, he's his generation's modern-day Reggie White. For solely how dominant he was, you put him up and down the defensive line, he still got after the quarterback, he was able to get home. I mean, I've seen tape where they, he's been triple teamed as yeah. a three technique. Which doesn't happen. I mean, there's only five offensive linemen. We're taking three of them yeah. and blocking one guy. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. how damn, that's how badass this guy was. So the reason why you see these guards get 30 million, 40 million, because if they could solely get hands on guys like that, there was a premium. So uh, congratulations to the fella. Yeah. He's a native of Pittsburgh. I thought he was going to end up being a Steeler. Uh, that didn't happen, uh, considering he played at the University of Pitt. But he's a badass defensive tackle. I'll, I'll tell you this: it will not surprise me if the Rams now pivot and try to get Chase Young. Uh, who still has not signed a yeah. contract yet. And I know there's uh, the people are disappointed in his play late, especially when he went to San Francisco from Washington. But if I'm the Rams, I still think in the final years of Stafford's career that I'm good enough to make the playoffs and roll the dice. I got to replace him with somebody. And there is a free agent out there with a lot to prove. I would not be shocked if the Rams pivot to Chase Young right away. When I think about Aaron Donald, <clears throat> the number one thing that comes to mind is double teams and triple teams. Just, like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, it got to the point after his like rookie season, second, second season, where it's just like, if he's on the field, you have to put it. It's so weird you say that because that's also my go-to on Pornhub. It's a weird thing. We got much more show coming your way. Put up much a black more photo. On the <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to clap. It's okay to clap. <laughs> it's okay to clap. <laughs> it's okay to clap. <laughs> Timmy's like, me too. I'll clap for Tim. Also, uh, also a certain shirt right there. Coming up. <laughs> there's there's a lot of man. teams <laughs> making lots of moves. But the one team that's doing absolutely nothing and stuck in neutral wow. are the Dallas Cowboys. We'll get into that after this. <laughs> Welcome back to <laughs> the Carton Show. We Hot have time. some sound from Stephen Jones, son of Jerry Jones, owner of the Cowboys, about what all in means to the Cowboys. And uh, let's hear from Mr. Jones. <laughs> Uh, spending free agency. It's keeping, you know, the core, keeping some of the great players in this league, like Dak Prescott, like uh, C.D. Lamb, like Micah Parsons, like Diggs. Uh, you know, that's what we define as all in. Is yeah, uh, I'm sorry. That, that seems a little confusing for Stephen Jones <laughs> to say two things there. One, we believe all in is A, keeping the core. So let me just stop right there. You may have missed over the weekend that they released uh, Michael Gallup and uh, Leighton Van Der Esch. Yep. Uh, he also said that we define being all in as you know, re-signing our great players. And he named them C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott, and Micah Parsons. Um, none of them, not a single one of them, nope. has been re-signed to a lengthy deal uh, just yet. And they haven't brought in any free agents of note. So if we're defining all in, that this is, I'm not making words up here. Stephen Jones is defining all in as keeping the core together. Well, you haven't done that. Signing our best players. 
Well, you haven't done that. And participating in free agency, well, you haven't done that either. So by your own definition, you are not all in. And then I decided to do a little research this morning. You did? Uh, you did? On the Dallas Cowboys under the Jones family stewardship, okay? Uh-oh. Since 1995, all right, so that's going back essentially 30 years now, guys. The Dallas Cowboys have never made a trade for anything better than a fifth-round pick. Mm. So I'm saying to myself, this is who the Cowboys are. Yep. Now, over the course of those 30 years, there's been the random guy here or there, the big-name guy that they've gone out and they've acquired with a lot of ballyhoo and all that stuff as a free agent. But in the last 28 years, they have not been to a Super Bowl. And now you're telling me that we are not participating in free agency while everybody else is participating. The Cowboys are sitting over here in their own little sandbox going, we're the Dallas Cowboys, and that should be enough. They haven't extended their own players. They haven't given themselves any more cap room. And they're sitting there with their thumbs up their ass while everybody else has gotten better. The Giants have gotten better. The Eagles have gotten better. Even the Commodores have gotten better. And that's without Lionel Richie leading for them. So Dak Prescott is 60 million bucks against the cap. They've not gotten that deal done. So by the time they do get that deal done, There's nothing they can do this year to become better outside of getting very lucky in the NFL draft. It's mind-boggling. And if I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, I'm sick and tired of it. Because, heck, the Chicago Bears got better. The Steelers got better. Everybody got better, except maybe the Dolphins and the Bills. Okay, fine. But everybody else got better, and you're sitting there going, we're all in. When are you actually going to act like you're all in? Well, this is why Cowboys fans have the right to tell Jerry Jones to shut up next season because you've done nothing. And so when the output is the same as it was this year, they can go back to what the hell you did at free agency. Now, here's the rub, and everybody knows it, including and starting with the Jones family. And it's, 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 it's frustrating, but here's the reality. Outside of San Francisco, there is no dominant team in the NFC. There's a lot of good teams, teams that could lay claim to being good enough to beating San Francisco. Detroit damn near yep. did it, obviously, in the playoffs this past year. And Jerry Jones is probably thinking, why am I going to go out and spend X amount of hundreds of millions of dollars when there's only one team I got to beat? The like, they're not worried about the Eagles, obviously. They're not worried about the Giants getting better, and no one's worried about Washington. So I could also put myself like the gerbil inside that brain of his that's running on that wheel nonstop all day, right, and going, I don't need to go get major free agents. The only team I got to beat San Francisco. And that's probably their mindset. Why would you say you're all in when you right. literally did nothing? Because they sells didn't make tickets. a single phone call. They didn't do anything in the entire free agency. They need a running back. They don't have a running back. No. Yeah, and let's forget, not only did they lose to the Packers in a, in a playoff game, but they lost to the Dolphins on the road, right? Yep. They also understand, like, everything that we talked about or we thought about the, who the Dallas Cowboy was fell apart in that Green Bay game, right? We thought they had a high-powered offense. Couldn't show up in the first half nor the second half. Defense. The defense was horrible. They couldn't run the ball. So when you talk about all-in, there's literally potholes in your franchise that you need to fill. And all the great backs, even to mid-tier backs, are gone. So what are you going to do moving forward? I'm with you. I don't get it. Look, even if, if the only thing you did – was extend C.D. Lamb, extend Dak Prescott, and open up 30, 40 million bucks in cap space. We could debate how you spend it, because sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. But as a fan, all we want, all we want is to see you try. Try, exactly. Like, I can't tell you that Tyron Smith has a lot of good football left in him. I know for me he's an upgraded left tackle for the New York Jets. If he sucks, I'll respond to that. But in the moment, the New York Jets made their offensive line better. The New York Giants made their defensive line better, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers, and on and on and on. But if I'm a Cowboy fan, while everybody else is getting better, or at least trying to get better, because not every move pans out, to be fair, 
My team hasn't even tried to get better, and that's why I'm ticked off if I'm a Cowboy fan. Well, you're right. Conceptually, this is not they don't they're not aggressive during free agency. But if you're telling a franchise that hasn't won a Super Bowl in 28 to 29 years, have been to multiple playoff games and lost, he can't get past the divisional round, and this is how you lead into every year. It's time for Jerry Jones to look himself in the mirror. Who am I? And where am I going yep. with this franchise? Because the same old thing at this point is pure insanity. I was thinking about this the other day. Maybe I'll do this tomorrow on the show. All the, uh, all the like, significant things in this world that have taken place since the Dallas Cowboys last won a Super Bowl, it's, it's mind-boggling. Like, the microwave got invented. Like, <laughs> you, can you imagine know. life without the microwave, Tim Hardaway? I still don't understand how microwaves work. I, 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 don't yeah, that's like I, I don't think that's true. The yes. microwave was the, way back I don't then. think so, Tim. I, I, when I was in college, the microwave was in. Uh, I don't yeah, know how old I, you are, but yeah, not in my yeah, lifetime. Uh, Maybe we yeah. just couldn't afford one. I don't yeah, know. You're older than me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see? There he goes. That's the one wow. that hurt. He's yeah. right. Wow. He's but right you, on that you, one. You caught a stray. Why are yes, we doing this? That yeah. was your fault. I remember only having four channels on TV and everything was in black that and white. I too. See? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, we're about the same. And then you had to go and, and hold the, the antenna up with your, your parents. <laughs> with <We're, we're> tinfoil. <laughs> right. Exactly. Eddie, what else you got, Jacoby? We're moving on a break. We're, oh, we're going to break? Yeah. <laughs> like, for real, like the Cowboys haven't won the Super Bowl since. I mean, like, that, that got to get better. The players around it, on the team now has to get better. You know what the number one? To win in yeah. the playoffs. Do you know what the number one selling car was in America when the Dallas Pacers. Cowboys the, the, the uh, last won? The Model T. Yeah. Model T. Model T. It's crazy. Wow. It's great. Like, Toy Story didn't exist the last time the Dallas Cowboys. No, that's true. I guess we're going to break. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back to Yoo-hoo! the Show. All right. Good morning headlines, and we start with this news. We've been talking about it all offseason, and it finally happened. Justin Fields has been traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. There we go. He was moved for a sixth-round pick. If he plays the majority of snaps, it will turn into a fourth-round pick in next year's draft. Do you think there will be a quarterback competition between no. Wilson and Fields? In no, they've come out and said Russell Wilson's the starting quarterback, and Russell Wilson uh, graciously – uh, welcome Justin Fields to Pittsburgh on social media. So I'm sure that's all good. Look, Justin Fields doesn't have a like to stand on. He, he can't make any demands. He can't, you know, say anything. He's just got to go out there, put his head down, and try to learn how to become a better football player. Uh, and that's the rub on this. You know, Justin Fields, three years into his career, has not proven to be a very good quarterback at the NFL. I remember Tim Hardaway a year ago, diehard Bears fan saying, we got a running back at quarterback. Yeah. No one dislikes Justin Fields. He's a good kid. He's a good guy. He's just not a good quarterback. I think there's a place for him on the field. In the NFL, I've said that repeatedly all week long last week that you guys don't like hearing it because it's offensive to tell a quarterback he's not a quarterback. Well, do you want to be in the NFL or not? And I think you have to accept now that the league has spoken. Right? It's like the tribal council has now spoken. (laughs) You have to go home. Uh, Because every team out there that feels like they need a quarterback – or has a young quarterback unproven, and you want to bring a guy to push him and actually fight for the job, every one of those teams said no. Justin Fields was clearly available. He got traded for a six-round draft pick, right. which is obnoxiously low for a guy that was thought of as a franchise quarterback. So I have to ask the question, which is rhetorical, because I know the answer, and that is how come nobody wanted him? How come no one jumped at the chance to get him to be their new starting quarterback? Here's the rhetorical answer. Because he's not good. No. Even the Denver Broncos, who have Ben DiNucci, (laughs) all right, and Jared Stidham as the only quarterbacks on their roster said, we're not even going to give you a fifth-round pick for Justin Fields. That's all you need to Craig, know. Ryan Poles, the GM for the Chicago Bears, flat out went to Justin Fields. Was like, where do you want to go? Do you hear options? And he said, well, I don't like these teams. I want to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Why? You got to say, for the Bears, they knew they were going to get Caleb Williams. Locked, said, it's done. However, they wanted to do right by him because they knew when they drafted him, they didn't do right by him. They didn't give him weapons. They didn't give him pieces. It was a catastrophic night. Water under the man. bridge. They know At he the can't play. At the end play. of the day, He's a pistol still. He says he wants to be there in a relationship he has yeah, but with Mike here's the thing. I'm trying to fix out with you because you and I typically see the uh, yeah, see things quite similarly. Off air, yes. yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. That right. being said, you know, like 
I, I'm trying to figure out why. Like, why you're willing to die on this hill. And if Greg Rear had said the same thing to Greg, yeah. who I talked to over the weekend about it, I understand wanting to see a kid succeed. We all do, right? If I'm a Bears fan, I'm like, damn, another you know, bad pick. We didn't get our franchise quarterback. Let's hope we get it right this year with Caleb Williams. But three years is a long time it's not, to though. be a starting quarterback and have zero success. Hey, as a guy who played in the league, and, it, and maybe Tim can attest to this, it, I'm telling you firsthand, who played on a historic team with a badass defense yeah. and two great – I was drafted by Bill Cowher, and obviously Mike Tomlin took over when he left. It took me four years into my career to I feel like I understood the game of football and knew how to play at that level. And it wasn't because I was incompetent, because the league is different, it's faster. You know, my development with the guys I play with, I play with two Hall of Famers. Sure. So my attention to detail and what I had so to I do. So I got to stop my, you there. And I appreciate that. And coming from Hofstra, the fact you had the career ad yeah. is almost impossible. Correct. Uh, so kudos to what you did to fight to have the career success yes. you had. Thank you. But we live in a different world now. And it's immediate success because you saw C.J. Stroud have it in Houston. Justin Fields has been in the league for three years now, and I'm sorry, Chris. has had no success. So that's why they're drafting Caleb Williams. But you're trying to make apples and apples. Every guy's different. Every situation is different. You can't say what C.J. Stroud went through in his first year is comparable to what uh, Justin No, Fields but did. I saw Brock Purdy come in and have no problem playing competent football. Oh, I come, haven't come seen on. Justin Fields do come it. On. Craig. So, Craig, I've been accused of cherry-picking stats before in this program. Yes, you have. I'm yeah. guilty of that. Yes. And I'm going to do that right now. Let's go, Toby. Totally do it. Because when you look at Justin Fields, there's some decent numbers Thank here. Thank you. Look at that. The last Get him, Jacoby. This is, uh, this is a starting quarterback in the National Football League. Okay, and let's go over what's the only what's the only stat that actually uh, sticks off the page there. It's He's the second one. 99 no, times. It's the rushing yards. Who's That's been sacked? 99 times. Oh, yeah. yelling. We're yelling now. Like, it, it, does that jump off the page, the screen for you? Perhaps you that should. Pre- Maybe you should run more. <laughs> yeah, get out of the but, pocket. But you wonder why he's but, running. But, look, if it's yeah. very- well, he's a running uh, quarterback. Yes, he's a me. running I mean, back. He's a slot receiver. Yards. You, you, are, you, okay. you're running more than the running backs. I'm just going to put this true. out there. Go ahead. Played three years. Yeah. He was sacked. 99 times. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. how many times he's been sacked? I mean, he's yeah, been two or three times a game. I get it. He's, he's, and I'll you want the man seven. to be an all world? Uh, well, look, he's going to a situation where he's going to be the backup quarterback. Every team in the league had a chance to draft for him. Nobody wanted him except for Pittsburgh once they got rid of Kenny Pickett to the Philadelphia Eagles. Good. He'll be the most handsome uh, backup quarterback in the league. But he is not. Jimmy Here's the thing. You, look, <laughs> you have to make a decision in life sometimes, right? Um, and it goes like this in football. Am I a starting quarterback in the NFL or nothing? Or do I want to have a long NFL career? And there's nothing wrong with being a backup quarterback and making a million dollars or two million bucks a year for the next 20 years as a backup quarterback. Lots of guys have done it. But at some point, you do have to take ownership that what may have come to you easy in Pop Warner, in high school, in college, does not come that easy when you guys get to the pros. It's why it's so hard to become a professional athlete, A, and have success at it, B, because you're talking about... Yo, the thousand greatest athletes in the world competing against let, you. Let, let, let me, let me, let me put it like this. And that's not so, a bad thing so if you're a backup. York Knicks, New York Knicks had R.J. Barrett. Right. right. They didn't think that his growth after two years was going to steady climb. So they saw that they had a trade to get O.J. and Anobi. And he, they could see him climbing, climbing and helping the team. I think R.J. Barrett is not going to be the guy that they thought he was or is, just like the Chicago Bears don't think that Look Justin that. Fields was going to be. Look at that. Is. Look at that's, that. That's how I compare that. And that's brilliant right you there. You go from there, I, that's, but that's my way. I don't think that Justin Fields was going to be a starting quarterback that was going to su- succeed in, in So NFL. here's my point on that, to back what Timmy's saying up. What's wrong with understanding, you know what? My skill set, for whatever reason, didn't go to this level. I can't be a competent starting quarterback, but I do some other things that make me a weapon that every team would want to have. And I know you guys, you you and Greg, found the defensive that I suggested he change positions to slot receiver or running back. Why not do that? Because you're asking a kid who, uh, in nausea, and I'm going to say it, was birthed into a situation that wasn't advantageous for him, right? 
on top of that, that's like Craig Carton, the king of New York, the king of talk radio, saying, you know what, Craig? I think you should now just cover it. You should be, a, you know, you should be a, the, the, the traffic control right. guy, right? I got to stop you on that. And here's the difference. I was number one. Right? Just a fan. I was, was number one coming no, out of No, no, but here's State. the difference. I got to New York and I dominated the most listened to guy in the history of New York radio. So I but you proved were put that in I was a position the number and you one had pick. the backing to be who you need to be. They put Just me with field. Boomer Esiason. You know how hard well, that was for me? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, having to carry six foot four, <laughs> 250 pounds of Swedish nothing and they, for 10 <laughs> years <laughs> on my back. Wow. You, oh my so imagine Lord. what Justin Field had to do. Going into Chicago and was sacked 99 times without an office line receiver or yeah. a head coach. The guy was left in no man's land. And now we're saying to, uh, on national TV, the kid is not capable of starting quarterback. He's not. What guy in his position has ever succeeded? Nobody. CJ Stroud Twitter. did it. CJ Stroud Rob added to Purdy did him. it. Brock You've Purdy has guys. Come on, Zebo, Kittle, uh, Trent Williams. He had this is the a, defense. This is a rare moment where I have to ask you, like, why? What's the connection? Because when you're so I hate, sensitive. I'm not to sensitive. Justin Fields. I just hate when people give up on guys who are good guys yeah. who play the game, who's not a distraction off the field, right. and who are entrenched in this game. It's hard to. First of all, football is a team game. It's not a one-on-one -on -one game. And a and business. A, and a business. Right. But that, to succeed in football, you need a team to win, and you so, need a guy to lead that so team. Let me, let me ask you this. So you think Justin Fields should stay with the Chicago Bears and lead and try to still lead the Chicago Bears to a playoff? I think if you get Justin Fields with uh, an offense with an identity and what the way he ended this season with the pieces now that he has, you're talking about you talking about Keenan Alley, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, an offensive line, a defense that's gotten better. You tell me this young man can't succeed if he had an opportunity I to play. I can tell you what I said. I, I think so. You keep it up, I'm going back to radio. But there's one thing. There's one thing. This. Well, that, that's not my I believe in Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields has a future as an NFL quarterback. But the market is the market. What he got traded for is what he got traded for. He got traded for a sixth round pick. A sixth round. Kenny pick. Pickett got traded for more. A sixth round pick. Why that's not? What, what is that? But what does that necessarily mean? Right, right. I, I think we put more into the sixth round pick. And yeah, like what is that? Pick. I don't think that has nothing to do with that. I just think that he wasn't good enough for my Chicago Bears to uh -oh. be the head. Let me tell you what. If so, Caleb Williams, we coming in, we putting all our eggs in the basket with him, yep. and I think he's going to be that quarterback. So he wants, he goes to. The uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to use him in the right way. You know, prior, no, they're not. Yeah, I think. Yeah, on the I, bench. I, That's how they're going to use no, him. They're going to bring him at, in a wildcat. No, in situations. Not. Uh, listen, in wildcat. Justin Fields is going to be right where he belongs on the sideline, yeah, not learn, playing football. Learn, uh, you know, I think he should have been learning. His first couple of years, anyway, with the Chicago Bears. Well, wow, that's water under the bridge. I'm with but that's you. That's what I mean. But, that, but they put this. a lot of pressure on the coach and the GM and the owners to play him. I think they played him too soon, my, myself. Fair enough. Caleb Williams is going to be much better day one than Justin Fields ever was. And that's just the reality. What's the Moving on to our second headline, and that you know involves the New York Jets. And guess what? Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is not going to be running for vice president. Are you for real? He is going to be the quarterback of the New York Jets. That's right. Also, so they signed offensive tackle Tyron Smith. What? They also have a meeting with Mike Williams. Yep. Does all of this tell you that the Jets are setting themselves up for a Super Bowl? Right? I mean, the in. AFC East is the Jets to lose. Yeah, your Buffalo Bills obviously have lost a lot of pieces, uh, a lot of cap casualties, obviously, and they're going to try to you know, fill those holes I don't in the draft it, coming up. The Miami Dolphins have had a brutal offseason yeah. in losing guys, and obviously guys that ended last year uh, with uh, major injuries. Uh, so I, the New York Jets are primed right now. They answered all the questions we wanted them to answer thus far other than depth at wide receiver, right? You have a legitimate offensive line right now far better than what we had the entire season last year. You're talking about pro bowlers and Tyron Smith. You're talking about uh, John Simpson, who obviously played guard for the Baltimore Ravens and led that offensive line to support the best rushing attack in all football last year. Elijah Vera Tucker is a key piece here, injured a lot. Uh, has played right tackle and right guard. He slots in at right guard. Morgan Moses, I'm not going to tell you he's the greatest player of all time. He's not. But a good depth piece that will start at right tackle. There's still some talk of bringing in another offensive lineman for depth. Maybe a David Bakhtiari who's not going to make as much money as he used to make. Who's had a lot of those bicep, uh, like a pec knees. problem and knees and yeah. whatnot. So the Jets, look, I, I know you guys think I'm crazy because I'm a Jet fan. Maybe I am. 
But the Bills have taken a step back in town, in my opinion. No, the true. Dolphins have taken a step back, in my opinion. And New England's going to suck. So the New York Jets come back with a vastly improved offensive line. They still have a top five defense. And now you've got Aaron Rodgers. So like last year, if, big if, Aaron Rodgers is healthy, I can now protect him. Plus, I've got a badass running attack. The New York Jets, it's their division to lose. Okay, Aaron Rodgers yep. is going to come back 100% health. That's correct, sir. Okay, but let me tell you this. Achilles injury mm -hmm. tear that he's coming off yes. with, his mobility is not going to be the same. He's not going to be able to get out in the out right. there and throw like he used to throw, like we used to seeing him do. Yeah. So you, you all better be careful because even with all these additions, He's still going to have problems at times mm -hmm. being mobile and getting out and trying to get his uh, rhythm back. I got so y'all better y'all you, you, sh you should. I'm good with cool. it. And let me let me tell you about this. He was never ever going to be vice president. <laughs> All right, never ever going to be vice president. He just <laughs> likes to have people talk about him. Yes, he just does. like you say with LeBron. He's the same way. I am he, with you. He likes for people to talk about him. He wants to be relevant. He would. He was never going to be vice president. Well, the all thing right? that nobody. So, I mean, I mean, y'all don't even that. know why we're talking about that. The problem is that no one fact checked whether or not Kennedy is even on the ballot, and he's I, only I on the ballot know. three states. Well, why, so, so why are we he's even never going to be. But right. he, I'm with you on this. He is the NFL's version of LeBron James. Yes. First ballot Hall of Famer. No one question. One of the greatest to ever play. No question. And loves when people are talking about All him. the time. I'm with you on that. I'll own that. All right. He's also my quarterback. And he's not concerned with scoring 40 in a game that he's losing by seven. Good. He's going to go out there. And the New York Jets are a 12-win team. He better, get, he, better get, he, better get his mo he better get his mobility back the way it used we'll to be. be just fine. As a, okay. As a Bills fan, I have to say that I am concerned about the Jets. You should be. I absolutely am. Because if they needed to, to up their line and they need to up their quarterback play, and they've done both of those things, yep. I, I believe they're going to get a second wide receiver too. Like, this is this is a formidable team. Yeah, but And you have the draft coming up. Don't sleep I on the draft not, either. I'm not, I, I, I'm not yeah. uh, uh, worried about the Jets because Aaron Rodgers is not going to play no preseason down. He'll okay. play one series. He'll it, play one. He, maybe. He'll play one. Maybe. But he but he once that season start, I'm telling you, Tim, that let me Achilles, ask you a quick question. That Achilles, I got a question. I, I'm, for not, you. I'm not I'm not fully I'm not fully one hundred percent on the I got board a question for you, yes. all right? You're a diehard Bears fan, I'm a diehard Jet fan. Right. Let's just keep it a hundred let's keep it a buck. Yeah. Right, let's, a keep buck. It a, let's keep yeah. it a hundred. That's what the all young right. kids say. We're gonna keep it a hundred right now. Yeah. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Which team is closer to winning a Super Bowl today? Oh, no question, Jets. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm think it's stay healthy. You're talking about Tyron you know, Smith and Aaron Rodgers just, both coming off injuries. Just put it just out stay there. Healthy. Right. Just put it out there. Williams, Mike Williams could be Mike Williams can come in and uh -huh. see what happens. That's right. I mean, I, who do, you know. Okay, just remember, the injuries. Jets are closer, injuries. and that's in the AFC. The NFC is easier, and the New York Jets are still closer. Yeah, I'm telling you. The Jets all like BS aside, right all theatrics aside, healthy. it's the Jets' division to lose right now. Healthy. Obviously, you lose Aaron Rodgers. It's a wrap. I'm not suggesting it's not. But today, the day after St. Patty's Day, <laughs> and I enjoyed St. Patty's Day yesterday. Oh, yeah. oh, I believe oh yeah. yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. All day long and all night. Uh, the New York Jets, it's our division to lose. That's a fact. True. Jack. Yeah. What you got, Jacoby? Moving on, we got the NCAA tournament. Yeah. It was set yesterday, and UConn is favored to win the entire thing. That would be the first back-to-back -back repeat champion since Florida in 2007. Do you think UConn can do it? Yeah, I do. They're by far the best team uh, in college basketball. Danny's done a great job there. He's a friend of the show, as you guys know. Uh, in an era where kids come and go because of the transfer portal and the really good kids don't stay in college because they're you know, uh, looking at the, uh, the, the possibility of making millions of dollars in the NBA, the fact that he has kept a group of kids together and he's a phenomenal coach uh, and has this team poised to win another championship back-to-back -back is really almost unheard of now. Because here's the reality of UConn. And I'm a huge college basketball fan, so forgive me for a minute. They are, they've been number one all year long. Yep. Yeah, they drop down oh, here yeah, there. But they've, they've been the best team all year long. Purdue's probably been the second best team throughout the year. But just focus on UConn for a second. Not a single household name on that team. Not a single household no. name. You got a couple NBA talented kids on that team, but not a single household name. Like people know Dillingham in Kentucky. People know Edie, you know, Edie yeah, and some of the other big names in the big conferences. Connecticut does it with all of them. 
And that is maybe the best coach team in all of college basketball. What Danny Hurley does with those kids is amazing. And I don't know how you pick against them to win back-to-back. I tell you this. People out on the West Coast don't know about Connecticut. People on the East Coast do know about Connecticut and who's on that team and who the ball players are. Uh, I, 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 I credit Hurley and Kamani because they – they keep these guys engaged. These guys pay attention to detail. They understand exactly what the game plan is. They go out there and implement the game plan as well as college players can implement it. And I and I, and that's because of the coaching staff, and that's because these kids want to come in, they put the hard work in, go out there and win games. So the, I, I, I put the kudos to, like you said, Hurley yep. and, the, and the coaching staff because they these kids come out and they play hard. And I, and, and I do believe that they can and they – they might win this championship again for the second year in a row because they have the uh, the bench, not only the bench, but they got guys that go out there and that can play with, with a lot of confidence and that shoot the ball very well. So, and, they, also, got, and, they, and they got a big stud down there that, that alters shots and block shots. And, I was going to say, banks. they play defense. They play really they good play defense. defense. That's old yeah. school uh, basketball, starting with his pops yes. and his brother, of course. And uh, that's the mean streets of Jersey City yeah. uh, coming to play out there in stores. And I hate Connecticut because I'm a serious guy. But he got guy. playing like the mean streets. Yeah, of, no, they, they, they play, yes. and they are going to the Final Four. No one's good enough to stop them until they get to the Final Four. Hey, real quick, one NBA one. thing for you. Another one yeah, NBA thing. Another one. End of the Dallas Maverick game yesterday. Ooh. Tie game, getting ready to go to overtime. That's Kyrie Irving yes. with the left-hand wow. dribble Ooh, yes. and the lefty jump yes. up at the buzzer. At the buzzer. Kyrie Irving wins the game for the Dallas Mavericks. Show it to you one more time. Sweet. That yeah. is something I, I, to behold oh, because he did it left-handed. Yes. He's not a lefty. No. If you didn't know Kyrie Irving, and that's off the inbounds pass on the curl and a sweet shades of magic as a hey, rookie. Hey, hey, yes. I'll look, tell look, you this. I tell you this. When I saw that play, I saw the shades of Magic Johnson and the Boston guard That's right. shooting the jump, the jump hook, hook, going oh. straight to the <laughs> locker room for the game. There we go right there. Yeah. yeah. The hook Dream right here. Bar was out. And then he just going to go straight to the Woo. locker room. There you go. Get up. Over Let's go. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was for game. Played all five positions. Actually, yes. Cream's on the court right there. Yeah. But played all five positions. But I'm going to tell you this. Look at the sweetness. Yes. Boop. I'm going to tell you this. A lot of people don't know that Kyrie Irving, not from that distance, yeah. but he works on that shot every day. Not from that the distance. Left hand? The left-hand hook shot. Really? He works on that every day. Oh. Around the rim, though. Not from that far out. But, you know, he's a creator. And when you out there playing basketball, you got to create shots that win games for you. Yep. You know, no matter how you do it, you got to make a shot. I, he made a me. shot. And, he, and, and, and a lot of people say if he does that again, he couldn't make it again. I put money on it that he can make it again. I've said on this show many times, and I get grilled every time I say it, that is one of the top greatest guards to ever play basketball at any level mm-hmm. in any country on the planet. And if not for the off-the-court stuff that people don't like, rightfully so, I mean, he is regarded as one of the great no players question. to ever play NBA no basketball. There was only one guy upset about him making that game winner. And that was Luca, because you know he likes to take yeah. the No, I no, mean, he was happy for yeah. no, no, yeah, he no, likes to no, take the happy for actually, actually the play <laughs> was for Kyrie coming off. Yeah. And he didn't but he didn't like I said, Luca's great like great. creators, great creators create shots. And that's what Kyrie did. He didn't know that he was going to have to shoot that type of shot, right. but he created I'm, that shot I'm, to make it. I'm glad we have Hall of Famer Tim Hardaway here to bring up that Magic Johnson hook shot, because one thing that that Magic Johnson shot and the Kyrie shot have in common is great defense. Like, oh, no Nikola question. Jokic. No question. Nikola yeah. Jokic, seven foot in his yes. face, and yep. he's shooting a 20 foot lefty hook. Great offense Pretty always good. overwhelms great defense. And I should, I should mention, defense. I know it's a sidebar it story. Matter. <laughs> but here he is in the final minute of the game with the energy to, to make a great play like that. And because he celebrates Ramadan, yep. had not mm-hmm. had anything to drink or eat the entire day. Um, so he's also. Well, it was an early game. Okay, is that the deal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we it, got, was, it wasn't a night game where so, you all day. I can't go an hour without eating. Right, right. He just played an right. NBA basketball right. game without minutes. eating or drinking right, yeah. and made the game-winning yeah. shot. All right, coming up, Kenny Pickett's out of Pittsburgh. His wife spoke about that publicly. And are the Lakers in trouble? Woo-hoo-hoo. Yes. Yes. Here yes. come the yes. Rockets. Yes. Yes. We'll get into it right after this. Yes, they are. 
Welcome back to the Carton Show. We have some breaking news this Monday morning. The Dallas Cowboys have converted a $5 million roster bonus into a signing bonus, creating $4 million in cap space. <laughs> However, Mr. Carton, what? he is still $55 million against the cap. We all thought that he would restructure his deal, but I thought it would be much more significant. Yeah, so here's the deal in the NFL. You can only restructure a deal once. Uh, per uh, per NFL season, you can now extend his deal so he can sign an extension to this deal. But this is it as far as the restructuring goes, uh, which is a little bit in the weeds. I don't want to get too much down the road on that. But this is crazy to me. You know, the fact that the Dallas Cowboys have only converted an extra $4 million of open cap space. Number one, they miss out on all the, the you know, the top tier talent anyway. Yep. Number two, what really good player you going to acquire for four million bucks you may get some journeyman player maybe a guy towards the end of his career you know trying to hang on but opening up four million bucks in the salary cap after 98 percent of the available players have signed is stupid it's like saying after i've eaten five big macs i'll give you the sixth one for a dollar i already <laughs> ate the first five i you know there's nothing left for me to eat right so i don't get this at all but again it's another example that the Dallas Cowboys are not all that competent when it comes to uh, either creating cap space, re-signing their guys, extending guys, and, of course, getting free agents because they haven't gotten a quality free agent in a very, very long time. you got to go back to 2012 since they brought in an impact free agent, and you can go back even longer than that till they made a trade of any real note that made the Dallas Cowboys any better. So this, to me, is a, a nothing burger right here. You open up four extra million dollars in cap space, but there's ain't nobody, there's nobody to sign for that money. You can't restructure his contract again. You can extend him now and play with the money, but you can't restructure it again. And you still got C.D. Lamb sitting out there without a contract, and you still haven't brought anybody in that makes you any better. And by the way, as much as I said that the Rams should pick up the phone and call Chase Young's agent, the Dallas Cowboys should still be on the phone trying to reach Chase Young yep. to improve that defensive line. But with four million bucks of extra cap space, that brings them to what? Five? Six at most. Maybe. In, uh, in regards to cap space. So you're not getting anybody but this is any why, good. But this is why the Cowboys continue to kind of be their worst enemy. The worst, you know, sound bite they have this offseason talking about their being all in. This is not all in, right? No, this is trying to figure stupid. it out. This is to us trying to, this is trying to save face because at the end of the day, this move right here does nothing for them and trying to uh, force them to get better next year. Like you talk about that restructuring or whatever the language is. Dak is still going to be Dak. The money's still going to be the money. And if they don't figure out how to, how to deal with CD Lamb's uh, contract, they're going to be in the same place. So I don't know what to make of it other than the Cowboys just continue it's to be the Cowboys. It's shocking to me. Like, Dak like, Prescott himself said, I'm going to restructure my deal because it's going to be best for the team. We can acquire more players. Steven Jones, Jerry Jones both said, we're going to restructure Dak's deal to open up some space right. so we can acquire more players. And then this is the headline? Four you million, million dollars. So in cap just space? think about what they've done here in the last, I guess, what, 36 hours, Nothing. right? They released Michael Gallup. They released the oft injured Leighton Van Der Esch. Those are salary cap moves. That's why they did that. And now they uh, restructure a signing bonus into a or a roster bonus into a signing bonus to get. Uh, I think all in, they're about nine million bucks under the cap now. All right, so. Where was that a month ago? You need a running back. Like, where was that yeah. two weeks ago when, you know, the legal tampering period started and you needed to get better players, whether it was a running back to replace Tony Pollard, if not re-signing Tony Pollard for maybe six, seven million bucks a year, whatever it might have been. This is like, oh, you mean free agency did start? <laughs> oh, my bad. We were busy. Oh, that was last week? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like again, yeah. There's, there's some guys out there where you can improve some of the talent – on your team, not a lot. And unless you're going to spend the entirety of your nine million bucks on one guy, you're going to get a couple guys who aren't very good. Like, this is a train wreck if you're the Dallas Cowboys. Because again, no team has repeated as division champions in the NFC in 20 years. That's crazy. You kind of fell into the division title last year when the Eagles collapsed, losing five of their last six. Nobody saw that coming. Yeah. The Eagles, on paper, feel like they've improved their roster. 
Well, I don't know if they have or not. I think they overspent to get Saquon. I think, you know, some of the other moves they made are good moves. So the, you, you lose Kelsey. You lose Fletcher Cox. Those are two guys that are hard to replace. I don't know why people think Kellen Moore is such a good coordinator. He's never proven to be one. And we'll see how it plays itself out, right? The commanders feel like they're a little bit better now. And you've got a whole new system out there yep. uh, with Dan Quinn being the head coach. But the Dallas Cowboys, to me – are not as good talent-wise as they were a year ago, a year in which they won the division, didn't lose a single game at home, and, of course, got waxed by the Packers in the playoffs. And if I'm a Cowboy fan, I am beyond frustrated because this is a clown move. Yeah, Do crazy. this move two weeks ago crazy. so at least you can play in the big pool with the rest of the kids. Yeah. Now you're doing it after the fact, and I know why. Because six months from now, the Dallas Cowboys will tell you, Look what we did this offseason in clearing up cap space, but it's not going to benefit you this year, and this is the year you're supposedly all in to win Jerry a Super Bowl. This is a clown show. I'm sorry. Just an absolute – I mean, let's start, start juggling. I right, put the big red nose on and the long red feet, and let's all walk around like clowns because that's what, sadly, the Dallas Cowboy front office has become – they tell me it's time now what? for everyone's favorite segment on Monday. Although something we like to call Get Learned. Get Learned. Get Learned. Get learned. Get learned. And I'm already taking heat for it online. I'll start you at number one. Rick Patino and St. <laughs> John's are this year's version of Wah! Primates? We got screwed. Don't forget a month ago, Ricky Pete came out and said, this is the worst experience of my life. <laughs> this team sucks. And now three weeks later, it's like, how come we didn't get into the tournament? Yeah. I'll tell you why. Seton Hall beat you twice. All right, so if anyone wants to complain, I know you beat Seton Hall in the tournament, but Seton Hall took two out of three from you. So if the Pirates want to complain, I want, I'll listen to that complaint, but I am not listening to the journeyman head coach who did some fugazi things earlier in his career at a number of stops of Louisville, oh, Kentucky, and on and on and on. Uh, to make sure he had the best he's team a, on paper. So, the worst slow your roll. And he's had some really bad experiences. Right. You think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think? Yeah. And I'm going to keep it to basketball because <laughs> I'm not a bad guy, Timmy Hart. Oh, okay. Sometimes you're not. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. All right. The second thing that I learned this weekend, and you guys can all jump in on this one, one more bad week of basketball, and the L.A. Lakers could oh. be looking in and trying to figure out how they avoid not making it into the play-in tournament because the Houston Rockets are coming, Tim Hardaway. No question. Houston Rockets are coming, and um, they're playing very well. And, 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 and sadly to say, Los Angeles Lakers are not playing at their highest. You, you could tell by the way they played against the, uh, the, the, the Warriors. Warriors the other yeah. day. They, they just didn't look like they wanted to play, come in and play in the playoffs. They looking like they want to end the season and, and, and just let's ride off to the sunset and let's try to begin uh, uh, next year. Yeah, and you right. talk about AD got hurt too. AD yeah. went down with eye confusion. So, like, it's it's starting to look bad for L.A. You're talking about LeBron not have, you know, playing half-hearted. On top of that, the team has no rhythm. Like, if you watch them play, it's really LeBron or nothing else. Even if you talk about Austin Reeves and all those guys, I thought Huchamore was going to be a lot better. He's kind of died out, so – Lakers well, like it is go three home. games in the loss column. Now, look, that'll be tough for the Rockets to make up, but one yeah. bad week of basketball. Right, so they're going to end up They're going to end up in the playing, but they're not winning two playing games. This team went no. to the Western Conference Finals last year. This team is not a threat. I, they, they're, gonna, they're not going to get overtaken by the Rockets because the Rockets are the It's Rockets. on the but table. They're, going, they're not going we're to not, We're not, we're not going to never say that they, they, the Rockets can't. No, overcome three games. I mean, just it, remember this: it, it, in the last it, ten, it, the Rockets have gained two. They were seven and three it, in the last ten, and the Lakers were five hundred. Like so. Craig said, one bad week, and if the Rockets play well, it could be a tie. It'd be awesome. Anyhow, much more on that throughout the next couple of weeks, and hopefully the Lakers will keep playing that boring brand of basketball that they have played since uh, LeBron got there. Uh, number three, the third thing I learned this weekend is that Kenny Pickett being worth more on the open market than Justin Fields tells you all you need to know about <laughs> Justin Fields. Kenny Pickett cost, what, a fourth-round pick? Yes. And a couple other pick swaps. And, of course, Justin Fields went to Pittsburgh for a sixth 
round pick. What's up? But Craig, if Justin Fields plays 51% of his He's snaps, not going to. He stop. may, you never know. You no, never, I do you know. Don't read it, you don't, I do you know. don't read a crystal ball, Craig. Right? I you don't do know. know. You're not Cleo. You don't know how this thing is going to turn out. Yeah. Russell Wilson can stink it up early, and Justin Fields just throw it out there for a fourth round pick. Anyway, bottom line is Kenny Pickett, he needed to go. He was a spoiled brat. When they needed him to be an emergency quarterback, he went your dress. Every time the Steelers came to him, he could be on the sideline and be ready to go. He wasn't ready to go. So, That's true. And uh, he was very uh, upset that they signed Russell Wilson. He's like, this is my team. Yeah. And they're like, listen, small hands, it's not your team, <laughs> yeah. right? He's spoiled. <laughs> Bye-bye, Kenny. All right. The next one I've got here is something that I learned. Uh, this is an interesting one, if I may. Uh, congratulations to Howard. Howard made it into the uh, big dance. Uh, they won the MEAC uh, conference. And one of their star players is a kid named Seth Towns. Now, why do I focus on Howard and Seth Towns? Well, it might be of note for you gentlemen to know that Seth Towns is older than Jason Tatum. Oh, oh boy. Whoa. Seth Towns is an eighth-year senior at Howard. It's the third university he's played basketball for. Mm. So while he takes Howard into the big dance, I just thought you should know that he is older than Jason Tatum, Anthony Edwards, Luka Doncic, Zion, and John Morant. He's almost 30, yeah. and he's playing college basketball. How is that possible? That's a long story. I don't care. Oh, okay, and okay. Transfers. <laughs> right, transfers. Tim Hardaway. Yeah. 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 You took he, 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 you know, I'm going to tell you this. So, sometimes he could have he could have sat out for two years and not played for two years and done something else, worked and did something else, and then came back to a, uh, to a school. Not the case in this story. And he but didn't not, go to the military. Not, I'm just saying, we're just trying to get out. Yeah. You know, some, so I know some guys that – at my school, had uh, two red shirt uh, seasons because of bad. He hurt his knees twice, and had he played six years. Did you oh, ever wow. play against a thirty-year-old in college, Timmy, or no? N not in college. <laughs> 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 uh, not in college. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's a man. That's really a man <laughs> that, playing among boys. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. He is twenty-six Ooh. years old, and uh, who does Howard have in the first round? Is it Tennessee? Who they? Yeah, they got Just Tennessee Wagner. in the first round. So there you go. So one and done for Howard, but good for the school to get in. Of Congrats course. to the other kids. Of course. But you can't you can't be a grandfather and play college basketball. Well, there's got to be some rules at some point. Yeah, right, Timmy. Maybe. Uh, so. Uh, oh, and I should that? I should rephrase that. They're in the first four. They play Wagner yep. uh, from Staten Island. Oh, nice. If they beat wow. Wagner, then they go and play. I guess it'd be Tennessee. Wagner is that right? is a good team. I don't know if they're gonna be able to play. So, be. anyway, I thought it was interesting that they had a 30 year old playing yeah, for them. 26 year old. Coach, we gotta yeah. take a quick break <laughs> after the break. We'll show you something that, that happened at the Auburn-Florida SEC Championship game. We've got Aaron Donald making some news, and we've got another Aaron who's decided what his future is, and it's not politics. Thank That's God. bad news for Bills fans, bad news for Dolphins fans, and good news for me. By the way, you know how it's been like a couple weeks since we heard anyone complaining about the uniforms? That's right? Cool. And I did a little, a, little, a little investigation. You did? It's not on Fanatics at all. They just manufacture the jerseys. It's Nike that created oh. it. And Nike created the jerseys with the Players Association in the room. So then they go to Fanatics and they go, here's what we want you to make. Make it. Knowing that if people don't like it, they're just going to yell at Fanatics. <laughs> but Fanatics has nothing to do with it. They just sell the jerseys that Nike and the players invented. That being said, I hope we get some see-through jerseys on a nice rainy summer night, Timmy, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> see-through jersey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, you, sir. You, 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 never mind. I want to see a lot. In that. Next. <laughs> Next thing. Okay, you got it. Uh, um, real, quick, real, real quick. Auburn, Florida, SEC title game. Auburn now takes the, the nod and wins the SEC uh, championship. Bruce Pearl right there. But I want you to focus on the person over Bruce's left shoulder. If you guys can <laughs> wind that back for me. Uh, the oh. person's got the Oculus VR glasses on while they're at the game. See that person right there? Yep. And I'm trying, now look, I've got a pair of the glasses as well, and there's a really cool app on it where you can pretend like you're sitting courtside at an NBA game. Right. But you do that while you're home. <laughs> you don't go to the game and then put the glasses on oh, I, because you're at the game. I saw a guy at the Dallas Mavericks game. He was sitting on wood in the first row. He had those on. And Why? We, right. Look, yeah, exactly. But he if was you're sitting at game. home on your couch, yeah, he was you can kind of be fully immersed in a game. Right. But I, so I'm trying to figure out 
What in the world is that guy watching when he should be watching the game? Oh, yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go. Okay, okay. That, of course, is Drew Locke's uh, beautiful wife. Yep. Oh, I've got more, Timmy. I got more. Okay, go ahead. I got more for you. <laughs> um, and in the second quarter, as I got bored with that. Oh, oh. No, he yeah. wasn't watching that. He wasn't watching Let me watch that. Rick Pitino cry on the sideline after not this. taking uh, St. John's back <laughs> to the tournament. And then in the third quarter, he was – Oh, now wait, oh, wait, wait. I that's mean, between me and Willie right, right. there. Yes. That's wow. nobody else. My arms are way bigger than that. Wow. I'm gonna wow. work it out. Wow. 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 Why is Craig's sleeves yeah. rolled up like you got a cigarette? What, 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 what is yeah. going on with this? Yeah. Uh, and what's in the fourth quarter, he had decided to uh, take some time. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Jerry. Yeah. 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 The one-eyed Jerry Jones. <laughs> Uh, not making any moves to make the Dallas Cowboys better. Yeah. Arr, he's like an angry old pirate. Right there, isn't he? Uh, I actually like, saw a guy on the plane yeah. with them on. I'm, and I asked him, I said, what are you looking at? Yeah, probably a movie or something. Yeah, he was looking at a movie. I there was you like, go. Okay, there I'm you like, go. I, them things cost about $4,000. No, no, no. Those, are the, those cost seven fifty. dollars The other <laughs> ones the other ones cost three or $4,000. Okay. Bucks. I'm just saying, if you're in New York, don't wear those walking down the block. You're going to get robbed. <laughs> yes. All right? Yes, so just all you tourists yes, out there, don't put those on. No. Time now for first in football, Jacoby. <laughs> Jacoby first in football, we start with the end of Aaron Donald's <laughs> career. He has officially retired. When you think about Aaron Donald and his legacy, what comes to mind, Mr. Curry? Sorry, I was taking a drink there. Um, the Super Bowl and the, and the play that won the Rams the Super Bowl. That's what I it comes to mind immediately for me. You know, if you go back and watch that Super Bowl, uh, you got Jamar Chase wide open down the right side of the field. Yep. And what was one of the great yep. Super Bowls, obviously, in recent memory. And Aaron Donald made a play. And if Aaron Donald does not get to Joe Burrow in that moment, they probably don't win the Super Bowl because sure. he's got Jamar Chase wide open uh, down the right side of the field. So it's that, and then it's, you know, what you said earlier, Will, to piggyback on your great point earlier, you know, there are certain people that you should never compare players to, mm. right? Tim Hardaway, for one, mm. he invented the crossover, so while other guys did it very well, that's his move, right? You brought up Reggie White, yep. and how dare you compare anyone to Reggie White except Aaron Donald's worthy of it. You know, I get tired sometimes of, oh, you know, Michael Parsons is the next Lawrence Taylor. No, no he's not. not. But Aaron Donald <laughs> was a dominant force on that defensive line like a Reggie White. No one's saying he is Reggie White Facts. or better than Reggie, but he's in the conversation. But to me, to answer your original question, Jacoby, it's the Super Bowl, right? That's where legacies are built. What do you do in the postseason when everybody's watching? You can be one of the greatest players of all time and not win a championship. We know that. But for those that do win, what you did in that game is the first memory we're going to have because it's the most lasting memory and it's what we remember the most. And for me, you know, that final play of that Super Bowl, Aaron Donald getting to Joe Burrow is the singular play I'm going to remember. You know, he also, he cracked the $30 million a year plateau. Yep. First guy to do that. So he's now kind of responsible for all these other guys getting into the mid and high 20s and getting close. And then, of course, the big deal this offseason, Chris Jones getting more than 30. That was the barometer. I want the Aaron Donald contract or better. Um, and I'm going to remember him as one of the great football players that I've ever gotten to see play. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, besides him being a total package, man, he, this kid play, this guy played with an edge, man. If you watch a lot of the Aaron Donald's highlights, he was fighting offensive linemen, right? And you got to say, he's an underside defensive tackle. He scrapes at, he scrapes the, you know, the height at six feet. But the fact that he demanded double teams and triple teams at the, his size. And listen, by the time he got into the league, he was all pro. You know, all the accolades wanted it. So, I, I think right here, when you talk about him solely, man, you got to put him up there with the greats and some of the goats. Yeah, and he's the first bout Hall of Famer. And it's not easy to have a career like that in that position. No. Because look who you're being judged against, right? Uh -huh. And one of the things I love about that play that you bring up is Sean McVay that's mic'd up on the sideline, and right before the snap, he goes, 99, make a play. That's right. right. 99, right. make yeah. a play. And then he does, and he wins the game. And that's when the big players step up. We're moving on to second in football. Former Chargers wideout Mike Williams is visiting – with the New York Jets oh, right? and the Panthers and the Steelers. Oh, yeah. Do you want to see the Jets sign Mike Williams? Yeah, and I, I normally don't care how you spend uh, your money because it's your money. Um, I just want you to sign good players and bring talent in. My concern is everyone's concern. He doesn't stay healthy, right? That being said, he could come to a situation where he doesn't have to be the number one guy because Garrett Wilson yep. is. 
and come to a situation with a rock star quarterback, assuming Aaron Rodgers stays healthy. So, you know, there's, a, you know, there's kind of a, there's a multi-step process I think NFL teams have to take before you can get a guy like Mike Williams. And that is, you know, you have to show some competency. You have to have other really good pieces that a veteran like Mike would want to play with. You obviously need a rock star quarterback because at this stage of his career, which is why I think the Panthers story is a joke outside of them overpaying to get him. If you had a choice, you could play the three teams that are being mentioned this week, the Jets, the Steelers, and the Panthers. You could play with, you know, the multi-time MVP in Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. You could play with the Super Bowl champion in Russell Wilson or you can play with, let me just get him. Hey, hey Brycey, Brycey, come on up there for a second, kiddo. Or, or you can play with little Bryce Young, right? So to me, unless Carolina gives him stupid guaranteed money, no one is choosing. I'm going to put you back down here now, kiddo. All right, there you go. At the feet of Giants. Um, nobody wants to play with Bryce Young. But I would want to play with Aaron Rodgers and, of course, with Russell Wilson because that's competency. Right. Like, I know if I'm open, I'm getting the ball. Right. right? So, to me, my concern, again, coming back from a torn ACL at wide receiver, right. does he have that speed still to get open deep? Because that's what I'm using him for. I just love the fact that the Jets are in the conversation because that's the level of competence you have. If you don't even get considered, there's a reason for that. So, I like the fact they were in it. And I'll say this about the Jets. Three new offensive linemen. Oh, yeah. So they've done what they were asked to do. They've made a major overhaul of the offensive line. Like, if I'm Brees Hall, you know, you know how pumped I am? I'm like, yeah, Pookie yeah. in New Jack City scoring some H. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I got an offensive line. I can't yeah. wait. That's an old reference. I yeah. know. Like, look it up. You know what I'm talking about. So I think the New York Jets are a team a lot of people are going to want to play for now. Moving on to third and football, Patrick Queen did sign with the Facts. Pittsburgh Steelers. There he is with Tomlin and the new quarterback, Russell Wilson. Get out of there, Crick. he spoke about his approach to moving in the division. Here is Patrick Queen. It's going to be weird, but I mean, you know, uh, I want to be that villain. I want to be that guy. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking to do some stuff to them. I like that. He guy. wants to be the villain. What do you yeah. think about him going from the Ravens to the Steelers? Do you think the Ravens will regret it? Yeah, I think so. Look, I thought he was the best uh, linebacker available this cool. entire offseason, and he represented that Ravens toughness. We talked about it all last year when you know, there were other teams throwing like, his words on my gimmicky offenses. He was like, bring it. We're going to punch you in the mouth, and we'll see how you react. He's a violent, violent football player, and I think it is a significant loss for the Baltimore Ravens on their defense. And to go to a division rival, you know, it's like Saquon going to the Eagles, right? It's going to bother you if you're a Ravens fan, rightfully so. But I really think the Steelers proved again to their fan base they're absolutely all in. They made major improvements, in my opinion, to that roster on both sides of the ball. I would just say this to Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen has shown some sensitivity online to criticism. You can't be the villain if you're going to be bothered by jackasses typing in their mother's basements on Twitter or yeah. Instagram. Those people mean nothing to you. Go be the villain. Go tell Baltimore what they're going to miss, not having you in the middle of the field for them, and go win games. That is a very, very good defense. Yeah, and let's be honest. Like Baltimore had a choice between him and Matabike. They chose. They chose mm -hmm. Matabike, bottom line. And on top of that, Patrick, Patrick Queen uh, has to also understand you have T.J. Watt, Cameron Hayward, you got Joey Porter Jr., you got Michael Fitzpatrick. You got you got evil. You got, you, you're supposed to be straighter with this Foot Clan. So go be the villain. Don't look back. Cut the cord and understand you're going to see them twice a year, and they're going to be knocking at your door, and they're going to be coming right at you, right? Because they feel they have a running back in Derrick Henry that can combat you. So yep. it's, this is the, the Steeler uh, Ravens rivalry is now is back. I think it's popping. great. I think Love it's great. It. That whole division's great with Joe Burrow coming back, and if Deshaun. Watson can play football, that is a black and blue division. No question. And whoever survives it may limp into the playoffs <laughs> when it's True. all said and done. We got to take a quick break. Russell Wilson, you got to love Russ. He's got a new tagline now that he's a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But are they the team to beat in the NFC? Yeah. NXT? Nope. I don't think so. What? It's the Jets. Oh, we'll oh. explain and discuss after this. That's junkyard. Welcome back to the Carton Show and Russell Wilson. He's signed by the Steelers, and of course, he did something corny. Here he is, Russell Wilson. 
What's up, Steeler Nation? Just signed, baby. Fired up to wear the black and gold. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, look at <laughs> it. Look at Get into look it. at that you thing and look at it go! Jacoby, let's go! Jacoby wins, y'all! Jacoby! There we go! There we go! Jacoby! Yes! We Fired up! Yes! Fired up! I'm still, I'm there still we go! Steelers! There we go! Pittsburgh going to the Super Bowl! What's more entertaining than Russell Wilson being corny with his new shaved dome? There we go! There we go! There we go! I can feel it! It feels like fall! Football's here! I yeah. love it. And here's the craziest thing. The Pittsburgh Steelers could finish in first, second, third, or fourth. <laughs> really good. On the table across That's the board. That's very fair. And I say the same about they the Bengals, the Ravens, <laughs> and the Cleveland Browns. I, By the way, I could watch that division play itself every single week oh, this no year. Because you're talking about four legitimate quarterbacks. Uh, despite what everyone thinks about Russell Wilson, we can't deny the fact he's a very good quarterback when he's on his game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And obviously we didn't see enough of that in Denver. You know, with Deshaun Watson coming back, he was 4-1 and one in games he started and finished. You know, for Cleveland last year, you know about Joe Burrow and, of course, Lamar Jackson. Like, if, if all I got this year was those guys playing themselves, I'm in. Because that's the best division in football. Doesn't mean they've got the best chance of winning a Super Bowl, obviously. But from a standpoint of one to four, you could close your eyes and throw a dart. And it'd be hard to argue wherever that dart lands on that team winning the division or coming in dead last because yep. they're all that good. Yeah, and also understand, like, he won't, be, he won't be forced to be the same old Russell Wilson. All he has to do is just be the field general. Run the offense, run the ball, let this defense win you games, and go all the way to the Super Bowl. It's done. Wrap. Yeah, it's almost like you know, which football is starting tomorrow. Ah! Oh! 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 What's happening? What's happening? Oh! 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 It's time for the top five sorry. at nine, number five. Joe Mixon, who now a member of the Houston Texans, said the Texans have a chance to be this year's Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Why would anybody want to be this year's Cincinnati Bengals? Well, they missed the playoffs last no, year. Yeah, They've man. never won a Super Bowl. Not what he meant. And their quarterback it's gets hurt every single year, it Craig, seems like. That, that's not what he meant. He oh, what did he mean, Timmy? He, he sees the excitement that 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 is up and coming yeah with the houston texans like it was three years ago uh-huh with the cincinnati Bay. in a year they didn't go. win the super bowl but, but they went to the super bowl they went there they, they went didn't there. make the playoffs they had like you said higgins donald made yeah. a great play let me ask you a question would you want to be last year's san francisco 49ers Yes. Rather you than would? rather than be the Detroit Lions, yes. Okay, just yes. ask you the question yes. for friends at home, that's all. Yes. Number oh, four. Oh. Aaron Rodgers will not be the next what? vice president what? of the United States Yay. of America. Oh, that but he will be the comeback player of the year, the MVP, MVP. the Super Bowl MVP, oh. and the greatest quarterback why, in the okay, NFL. I'll take that. Why, 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 I'll take that. Why, why don't we just say healthy? Because I'm not sure if he's going to be healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he said he's not sure he's going to be healthy. But the news came out but he over gonna the win weekend. All that. Super Bowl MVP. Kennedy <laughs> Jr. has chosen somebody else oh. to be his running oh. mate. Oh, okay. Rabbit and is rude. I don't know who it is. Oh. And Aaron Rodgers is still stoned right now <laughs> in Costa Rica, vomiting on Miami Dolphins safety Jordan Poyer. But that is the comeback player of the year. Come Number back. three. <laughs> UConn is the best team in the country, and nobody can name a single player on the roster. And that tells you how well coached they are by Danny Hurley. UConn should go wall to wall, double digit wins across the board, and win their second consecutive national championship, Timmy. Well, let's not put all that pressure on them double digits. Let's, let's let them win some, let's let them win six in a row. And uh, but they are playing the most confident right now. Yeah. They looking the most confident. They looking like you know a team that can repeat again. And kudos to um, to to the coaching staff because they got they got a team that that I think that pretty damn good. Pretty damn pretty, good. Pretty pretty they are good. the toughest practice, as so they we'll say. We'll They're see. the number one overall seed and they're well they, deserved. They did that they're the best team of college basketball. Too, which was wrong. All right, number two. <laughs> 
what in the world are the Denver Broncos doing at quarterback? I don't this. If the Eagles got Kenny Pickett for a fourth round, I don't understand this. And uh, Mr. Justin Fields goes to Pittsburgh for a sixth rounder. How can you sell your fans on Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci being your franchise quarterback this year when there were two other guys who, again, have not proven to be great, right. but they've at least played starting quarterback in this league, and the Denver Broncos sat on their hands and did absolutely ugas. Well, they're, they're picking the top 15, so hopefully uh, they can hopefully what? Get, get a quarterback, maybe some slips down, and J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan, maybe. Nah, he's uh, he and, dropping uh, down to 13. And it's Bo Nix, but still, like, Jacoby Brissett signs with the Patriots, like someone like that, or even even I don't even want to Michael say Michael Penix, land too. Even like Mitch Trubisky, like get somebody. Who's but here's than the point: Dinucci. you could have gotten obviously because the Steelers got Justin Fields yeah. for a sixth round yeah. pick. Why were you not interested? And I'm a, I'll be I'm the guy telling you Justin Fields stinks. He's not a good quarterback, but he's better than Danucci and Stidham, and at least gives you a one year kind of bridge to whatever the big plan is moving forward. The Denver Broncos might be the most incompetently run organization in the NFL. And that includes the Dallas Cowboys, (laughs) which brings us right now to number one. Dare I say it in front of my main man, Timmy Hardaway, but the New York Knicks are good enough to win it all. There we go. There we go. That's right. You got to love that. Now that OG Ananobi is back, and they would they would have Jacoby two losses total. Yep. When Ananobi plays yep. with Jalen Brunson, Randall's coming back. I think they're like sixteen Mitchell and Robinson's two. Coming yep. back. The New York Knicks are getting healthy at the right time, Mr. Heat. Own it, eat first it, of all, First it up. of all, Randall is not healthy. Oh. He's gonna be. No, he will no, be. No, 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 no. Don't be pessimistic, <laughs> Tim. Be optimistic. Wait, 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 wait. I am optimistic. Y'all are the ones that are delusional. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm <laughs> he has. Uh, 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 shoulder shoulder injury that needs to be operated on. Right. And if you set a pick, if he hit, gets hit the wrong way, if, even if he goes up strong and gets hit, that shoulder is popping yeah, out. Put of him spot. in a brace. He'll be fine. Don't, no, need, no, him. No, don't, don't <laughs> need him. Don't even need him. Okay. Don't even need him. You don't need don't him. Don't even need him. Remember we you said don't need him. Jalen Brunson on March 18th. Wow. Remember we said. It. Remember we wow. said it. The Knicks I, I'm, you know, I'm, are good enough I'm, I'm, to make I'm, the run. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. Okay. They, if they hold, if they healthy, yeah. and if Rando is able to play and not get hurt, yes, in the play in the whole Say playoffs, Say they, they have a chance. Say yes. it. They have a Woo-hoo. chance to win a championship. To, but, but, to, to win a win championship. championship. Yeah. To win a championship. But I'm telling you this, I don't see Rando holding up. I really of don't. Of course you don't, because you're a Miami Heat Hardaway. fan. Oh, no question I'm a Heat fan. That's right. No question. Sometimes your opinion is colored by the team you played for, and you've been that's very honest like about that. That's why it's like this right now. That's good. <laughs> all right, that's your top five and nine. We got all your headlines coming up. Uh, Russell Wilson now out there with Justin Fields. There we Pittsburgh. go. Are, are they doing? the most improved quarterback situation no in the NFL? No question they are. Yeah. Well, unless you count Aaron yes. Rodgers coming yes. back, of course. Oh, uh, we'll get to it oh, right after this on FS1. Oh, are we just still dealing with Aaron Rodgers? Good morning. Welcome back to the coach. All right. We have, your morning, guys. Love we have some breaking news. <laughs> Head scratching breaking news. We all knew that the Dallas Cowboys were going to restructure Dak's contract in order to get his cap number down, but it went from $59 million to $55 million. That's huge. Craig, what is going on <laughs> with the Cowboys? They're, they're, they're a joke. Uh, look, that tells me that there's someone that they want to sign today. Uh, and the cost was too much for them to afford under the cap prior to doing it. You know, the NFL's got some of these, like, quirky rules, like you can only restructure a contract once per year, but you can restructure it, and then you can re-sign a guy to an extension. So you can maneuver numbers and be real fungible with the math however you want it. But to me, to save $4 million bucks under the cap, which is, you know, irrelevant amount of money, it tells me that there's a guy that they're going to sign today, and they needed the extra four million to sign him. The Cowboys now have in between nine and ten million bucks available under the cap. They've signed nobody legitimately. They haven't re-signed their own guys. They haven't signed any free agents. Yeah. They've been the most dormant team this entire offseason. So you lose Pollard, you lose Tyron Smith. He goes to the Jets. Over the weekend, they cut Van Der Esch and Gallup to save a couple million bucks more on the cap, and uh, they lose their center. So. The reality is that it's not even addition by subtraction. They're not better for making those cuts. They're worse 
for making those cuts, and they haven't spent the money yet. I would be surprised if we come in here tomorrow morning and the Dallas Cowboys haven't signed someone. Couldn't say who that person is. I still think Chase Young makes a lot of sense in Dallas, but now that the Rams got rid of, or excuse me, Aaron Donald retired, they've got an opening for a defensive lineman. So I think Chase Young going there would make sense as well. I would be surprised, though, if we come in tomorrow and the Dallas Cowboys haven't signed somebody. But I was because if you last don't, week, every day. What was the point of doing what you did yesterday, uh, releasing two guys and restructuring Dak Steele, unless there's a free agent you are going after right now and needed the money to get him? So I do think we'll come in tomorrow and the Cowboys will sign somebody. Uh, who that person is? Maybe it's a couple people. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's a couple veterans. Like, maybe it's Odell and someone. Uh, we'll obviously have to wait and find out. But if I'm a Cowboy fan, I am pissed. Yeah. If you, because they're not all in. Yeah, the, I think if you're a Cowboys fan, you're pissed for a couple reasons. There's no direction with your ball club in the offseason. Like, if you talk about what the Eagles did, they got a running back. You talk about the Bears. They filled up the office line, even like the Jets did. Even Baltimore said, hey, they didn't, they didn't need an upgrade in their running back position, but they made one in Derrick Henry. So, my thing right now, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, Valley, you don't have the cap room to make the big plays. What's your, where, what direction are you going in? Because you solely can't say you're all in and come back with the same team who's going to have less pieces and then you're going to have a better outcome than what you did this, and last, no, this past and season. No run game last year and now they have no running back. And Micah Parsons himself said that he wants some help. He wants some, some help in the defensive right. line and the linebacker position. They didn't upgrade there. They have holes. Glaring holes. And it just seems like they have done absolutely nothing for the yep. past seven well, days. It seems that way because that's what's They've happened. They've done nothing. They haven't done a damn thing. Look, the biggest story coming out of Dallas prior to this news that we broke about a half hour ago is that they're actually promoting Al Harris. Like, like that's the biggest news yeah. that Al Harris uh, is now going to be an assistant head coach. Like, and the fans are like, Former Yeah, Packer, we like it. Al Harris. That's I great. I do like Al Harris. But can I like you Al sign Harris some effing <laughs> players, please? <laughs> so that's how the, the, the Dallas Cowboys, it's like a bad political machine. You know? <laughs> it's like, look over here, but don't look over there. Don't look over there. Look over here. But, Craig, even, listen, if, if you're, I'm going to put you in Jerry Jones' spot. If I'm a reporter. Oh, I'm rich. Type, yes. yes. If I'm Jerry Jones and you look at what the Giants did and the Eagles did, if I ask you, how are you better than what you were this year, what would you say? I don't have an answer. I'm not. Right. I'm not. So if you, if I'm you, wealthier, but I'm not better. So if you hear Cowboys fans be absolutely frustrated and ready to burn Jerry World down, they have a legit reason because Jerry has done nothing. He has done nothing yep. to better the conference, not even to better the conference, better the team, and can be combative against the Eagles and Giants. Look, I told you this a, f- a month ago, a week ago, three weeks ago, two months ago. Uh, sadly, my favorite owner in the history of the NFL, which is Jerry Jones, I've never wavered on that, and I've never been a Cowboy fan, uh, has lost his fastball. And this organization has lost its fastball because the fact that you don't have to start looking like, take stock of it. The Dallas Cowboys kind of get by by being the Dallas Cowboys. Right. I always mm-hmm. said this about Dan Marino. Dan Marino wakes up, what's his job? To be Dan Marino. Okay. The Dallas Cowboys wake up and they just think, because we're the Dallas Cowboys, we can do whatever the hell we want. We don't even have to win. And we sell out every game. And we got the biggest fan base. And our franchise is worth more than every other franchise. But in 28 years, zero NFC championship games, a winning percentage of about 500, and only five total playoff wins in damn near 30 years. Like, that's Jet-esque. And speaking of the Jets, the Jets have more playoff wins (laughs) than the Dallas Cowboys do in the last 28 years. So does just about everybody else. The Dallas Cowboys are a dying franchise. Hate to say that. Moving on, we have some headlines about the Jets, Mr. Carton. Your team is in the news. Guess what? Aaron Rodgers is going to be a quarterback in the National Football League, not going to be vice president of the United States. And also, they have shored up their line, signing former Cowboy Tyron Smith. And they also have a meeting, a little visit, with Mike Williams. How do you feel about all these developments around your team, Mr. Carton? It just shows you that everybody wants to be a Jet. And why I, I kind of <laughs> skip down the street when you're a jet. You're a jet all the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. There you go. Do, 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 oh. do. Yeah, I'm happy to be a jet fan. I'm a jet fan. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, the fact that all these dudes want to be jets tells you that there's a belief that Aaron Rodgers playing for the Jets gives them a legitimate shot to go to a Super Bowl. And know this, the Bills have taken a step back talent-wise. The Dolphins have taken a major step back talent-wise. And New England sucks. The AFC East is my division to lose. Now, I might lose it. 
but it's my division on Labor Day to lose. And nobody can really argue that with me right now. I know Josh Allen's a rock star. Love him. I know that offense in Miami is off the charts amazing. Of course, you may have seen the news story this past weekend. The Tyree kills in a little hot water yeah. for an alleged domestic uh, violence situation yeah, about, with uh, his new bride, where good. he allegedly put a cigar out in her face. Oh, Unlit, I, however, yeah. he claims that he missed her face, but we'll see how that plays itself <laughs> out. And well, I got the Jets, helps, right? and the New York Jets are just sitting back going, we're running it back, boys, and we now have Aaron Rodgers healthy. I've got three new starting offensive linemen. And again, Mike Williams is more name than substance because he gets hurt a lot. Yep. But if I can add Mike Williams on the right kind of deal, then you have an offense that may not be as good as their defense, but an offense that's going to cause problems. I got a badass running back in Brees Hall, a badass wide receiver in Garrett Wilson. I got three-fifths of my offensive line brand new and better than the guys that they're replacing, sure. right? I've got a top-five defense. My concern, honestly – is is my coaching staff good enough to get the best out of those guys <laughs> exactly to doing. help me win? And I'm a huge fan of Robert Siles, and quite honestly, he's a friend, and maybe that's kind of jaded my opinion. No, it hasn't at all. <laughs> I don't, I'm not in love with Nathaniel Hackett, obviously, but I now have the talent where I can win, and that's all I've ever asked for. Give me talent, and let's see if we can win. Yeah, and the issue right there for the New York Jets is right there. I'm talking about Nathaniel Hackett. Can he make this offense what we thought they were going to be this year under Aaron Rodgers? Now, if Aaron Rodgers becomes healthy, you got Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. They still need a number two. You still need another big-time uh, tight end because you lost C.J. Yusuf Mazada. Overall, if this team stays healthy, they should be where they need to be in the playoffs. Hopefully, comp uh, compete. They're for division champions. And you know the one thing I've never had in my lifetime? A home playoff game. Never seen it. Huh. So I now have a chance to win the AFCs, yep. get a home playoff game, and then we can start talking turkey. And I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, the most fun, obnoxious fan <laughs> that you've ever seen on TV it, when my Jets win the AFCs. It's going to be game on. Like Donkey Kong. We always, oh, it's gonna we be always great. talk about Aaron Rodgers. We're talking about you know adding Mike Williams and, and Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. But this defense is, is what's going to win them games. Yeah, and by the way, they've made some defensive moves as well. Obviously, we lose Bryce Huff. We've had a couple other acquisitions there. But you're talking about a team because you have Aaron Rodgers. And you guys are right to say if he's healthy. And I can't argue that, Timmy. Yep. If's the biggest word in the world. If that dude is healthy and all in like he was last year, meaning day one of minicamp. Day one of workouts, day one of all the stuff that some veterans can skip. If that dude does what he did last year, being all in with his time, we're a juggernaut. He can't skip nothing. He has to be there. I agree. Yeah, because of rehab. And if he wants to be that, that guy for the New York Jets, he has to be there day one yep. to start rehabbing and getting himself 100%. Not saying when he go there, he's going to be 100%. But, you know, as, you, as we all know, yep. uh, Injury, you have to be there from day one yes. to get, get yourself ready for the for the NFL. Well, season. not even a, be there is one thing, but also he has to understand like this off season. We talk about the distractions. He's been the number one distraction, right? right? And yes. so anytime you want to set the tone of the building with the expectations they're put before themselves, he has to be the bell cow. Now you're talking about Tyron Smith and some of these other guys. They're not just coming here to play with Aaron Rodgers. They're trying to see how Aaron Rodgers leads, and part yeah. of leading is being on the field, right. time and time, and being accountable for what you do off the field. To be right. fair, before he got hurt. Spring and summer, he was money good. Oh, he yeah. won over yeah. New York. He did everything yes. we wanted yes. him to do. He was here. Thing. He was present. Yeah. He went to the garden. He went to Barclays. He went. He was a man amongst the people. Right. right? And we're like, this isn't what I heard about Green Bay. This is a different cat, right? So if he does that again, great. And then, of course, you guys are right. First Coming from an injury, you got to play. First of all, there's nothing in Green Bay. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah. I mean. I mean you got cheese. I, all, yeah. yeah. A lot of cheese. Yeah, you go see them make cheese. There you go. You know, here you got everything. Listen, there's a reason that God put heavyset women on the planet. <laughs> right. All right? Let's just be breakfast. fair. We all need love sometimes. I lived in Buffalo for seven months. Thank God for, you know, you know who. In Green Bay, it's the same thing. They'll keep you warm. Yeah. They'll make you food at night. And they'll make sure you feel good going to work. So, now he's in New Jersey. Whole different ball game. Okay. <laughs> in New Jersey. But the fact Ooh. that Jet fans can now dream. Are you dreaming? Oh, it's going to be great. I'm in such a good mood today. Rick Petito's crying. And Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and we're just, I'll just say one thing about Aaron Rodgers. Because I know he's going to say this as well. So, I'm going to trump him by saying it first. Aaron Rodgers 
is not the guy that put out the rumor that he was going to be a vice presidential candidate with RFK Jr. That came from RFK Jr. while Aaron Rodgers was vomiting on Jordan Poyer during ayahuasca in Costa Rica. <laughs> so it's not like he's putting it out there. Now, he didn't do anything to dissuade no, anyone right. exactly. from yeah. thinking it. He ran with the it. The Sandy yeah. Hook story, which was obnoxious and offensive uh, at best, was not put out by Aaron Rodgers. Now, him throwing the ball before games yeah. and all that kind of nonsense. Or, hey, if we're in it, I'm going to come back. That's on him. But the Aaron Rodgers I got last spring and summer, if that guy comes back, I'm good. I'm good to go. Yeah, but you also got to understand, like, Aaron Rodgers, Valley, he may have not thrown his name out there. He, like you mentioned, he didn't deny it. It didn't come from – it came from him having a conversation with RFK. Like, this, you know, I'm not going to blame you openly, for what Timmy said. Yeah, but no, I'm not going to openly volunteer Craig for vice president. Like, you, at some point, you're going to say, I wouldn't vote for vice president. I'm like, okay, Dude, you're vice president. That, by the way, beyond that, do you know the other name that came out this weekend that Kennedy was considering for vice president, just to give you an example of how crazy this became? So, obviously, it was going to be Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh. It was Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Then it went to the next level where he offered the gig to Mike Rowe, the host of Dirty Jobs. <laughs> He was a guy considered for vice president, and now looks like he's settled on the former wife of one of the Google founders. Wow. So he was all over the place yeah. as far as who might make a good vice president. But I'm not going to blame Aaron Rodgers for someone else putting his name out there. I'll blame him for not disavowing any interest in it for sure, but he didn't start the story. Moving on to our final headline, Justin Fields is now on the Steelers. Yeah. We talked about it all offseason. They traded for Justin Fields. They gave up a sixth-round pick. Will be a fourth-round pick Whoa. if he plays 51% of the snaps. Russell Wilson, who also just signed with the Bears, I'm sorry, the Steelers, <laughs> put this out there. Let's get it, Justin Fields. QB room about to be fire emoji. Fire! fire emoji. Yeah. Fire emoji. Yeah, he said, what a great leader he is, huh? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> He's all, that's being all in. Reaching out. Look, Bring I think, if, for, uh, look, Russell Wilson was a terrible disappointment out in Denver. Let me just start with him, right? Yeah. He, it's, it's like being reborn and a new chance at being a rock star on a very good team with a great coach and a great run franchise. So he's a chance to kind of, you know, kind of resuscitate his career sure. towards the end of it. Mm -hmm. Justin Fields isn't a very good quarterback. And if he was a decent quarterback, one of the other 31 teams would have made a play for him and he wouldn't have been traded for a six-round draft pick. So we can talk all we want to about how Chicago didn't do right by him and there was no talent there and no offensive line. Right. And once they got a legitimate wide receiver in D.J. Moore, you saw him kind of flourish a little bit. Blah, 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 blah. Three years in, the Chicago Bears know what they had. Great kid, bad quarterback. And they also know that they're going to draft a kid who's a franchise generational talent in, excuse me, Caleb Williams. The fact that he only went, though, for a six-round pick, well, I'm going to walk through this real quick. Because it's one thing to say, well, Chicago never supported him and didn't give him the tools he needed. He You've got 31 defensive coordinators in the league who I'm sure at some point in their careers over the last couple of years have to sit down and say, all right, if I'm playing against Justin Fields and the Bears, how do I attack that offense, mm -hmm. right? Well, I'm not worried about the quarterback. He ain't very good throwing the football. I'm worried about him getting out of the pocket and right. running because he's as good as anybody in the league at that. So that kind of makes its way around NFL circles. Yep. And the fact that a kid that you guys have sat are saying, how could you let him go? You got to give him a chance. You got to build around him. He's going to be a rock star on and on and on. And he got traded for a six-round pick. It's like I always say, you're worth what someone's willing to give you or give up for you. You might want to sell your house for five million bucks, but if the highest offer is two, that's what it's worth. And the flip is true. So to me, if the best offer Chicago got, and they had to have talked to a number of teams, right. if the best offer they got was a six-round draft pick, then that's all Justin Fields is worth, a six-round draft pick. And think for a minute. The Denver Broncos don't have a quarterback, and they didn't offer a six-round oh. draft pick. And I'll do you one better. Kenny Pickett can't play NFL football either. And the Eagles gave up more to get him than the Steelers did to get your guy. Yeah, and Come the, to terms. And the Eagles also overpaid for uh, Saquon Barkley, right? So they're in the I spending think they business, did. Yes. The bottom line. But as far as Justin Fields, the thing about him I love 
right as of right now is that he's accepted all of it. Like he's going to he's going to Pittsburgh. He's gonna have a better outcome. But when he was in Chicago, there was nothing for him. And I know we talked about it in nauseum, but that's why you have to like what the Keenan Allen deal is because he's gonna he's gonna be that kind of security blanket for a young quarterback, and which Justin Fields didn't happen uh, didn't have when he was in Chicago. So as much as you want to say you know his market value is low, it's low for a reason. He had nothing because he's not good. Well, like you had Cole Komet <laughs> and DJ Moore, you didn't throw for three thousand yards. Dude. Like you're not good. Do you know who else went for a six round pick? Mac What's Jones. up? Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Mac Jones also went for a six round pick. Would you rather have Mac Jones? Mac Jones, Jones. that's what he They're is. The same value. Yeah. You, you are what the market dictates what you are. I'm shocked that he went for a six round pick, but he did. Yeah. And look, everyone knows that Chicago's drafting Caleb Williams. So in theory, I guess you could say that, you know, the Steelers had them over a barrel. Uh, I'm also surprised that they traded him now and maybe didn't wait to the draft. Maybe at that point you get that one team maybe to overpay a little bit to get him right. you know, around the draft or draft day, whatever it might be. And I'm also surprised they must have had a conversation with him. Because to me, yes. the, the one thing Justin Fields does well is, is a talent that very few people have. I would have, as I said all last week, I would have made him a Taysom Hill type player. I would have kept him on the field I don't understand the downgrade. somewhere other than quarterback no, because I if I get that guy the ball in open space, he's impossible to bring down. Why would I just walk away from that unless he's like, look, I will never play in the NFL if I'm not a quarterback. And that's why they traded him. But he's earned the right to play. No, he hasn't. What are you talking about? How's he dominated right? Ohio State when he got to Chicago. First of all, they didn't they didn't make Lamar Jackson uh, a slot receiver right Because he's away. a great quarterback. And so, what, listen, when Justin Fields finds a system that can fit him with yeah. the right enough pieces, he will be a great quarterback. Well, yeah, but that'll be a flag football league when it's all said and done. Because <laughs> it's not the NFL. Do you think he will challenge Wilson for the starting spot? No, they've already come out and said, like, we want to be clear about this. This is not a, a, a gig that's open for, uh, you know, summertime competition. Russell Wilson's the starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Justin Fields is the backup, period. Stop. That's not up for debate. Now, if Russell gets hurt or something happens, yeah, then maybe you go, obviously, Justin becomes the number two quarterback there. But at some point, Willie, I'm sorry. You know I love you. No. This thick head of yours, though, you got to let the, the, the notion seep into it that Justin Fields is a backup in Pittsburgh because he's not a good quarterback. And when he starts and you see the kid mature yeah. and have the pieces around him, starts. he will be great. Russell Wilson's only there for a year. Okay. Bottom line. Uh, so when Russ is out so, the so, door, if he doesn't yes, deliver, yes, yes, Justin, Fields. Yes, Justin Fields. Justin Fields could watch Russell Wilson and and, and there you go. And yeah. get his stuff together and be ready to Justin go. Justin Fields should start learning how to run routes because that's what he's going to be in the NFL.